of Senate Resolution 627 and Senate Resolution 631. Uh, before anything else, the chair apologizes for uh, having uh, at short notice um, rescheduled the hearing by uh, a few minutes. Uh, an earlier schedule went way, way over time. Uh, thank you uh, to those who were here on time. And uh, once again, uh, I apologize. I'd like to acknowledge my fellow senators uh, present here, uh, Senator Aini, the author of uh, SR 627, and Senator Joel. And uh, we look forward to our other colleagues joining us uh, later uh, in the hearing. Mga kasama, noong pong nakaraang Marso, nadinig natin ang salaysay ni Diana, ang kababayan natin na tinrafik sa Syria na mga illegal recruiters, kasabwat ng mga tiwaling immigration officials. Nung nakaraang hearing, pinalabas din namin ang video ng tatlo nating mga kababayan na na-traffic sa Syria. At tinanong natin sa DFA ang kalagayan ng isang Marites Pantonal, ang Pilipinang pinakulong ng kanyang employer o amo matapos niyang hilingin na umuwi dahil namatay ang asawa niya. Masaya po akong ibalita na ang isa sa tatlo nating kababayan, si Elias Alice, ay nakauwi na sa Pilipinas noong Mayo 1, araw pa ng manggagawa. At kasabay niya sa flight na yon si Marites. Mamaya ay madidinig natin sila. Ako po'y humahanga for the record. Kay Charge Daffairs Vida Soraya. Ma'am, mabuhay po kayo. And to Secretary Loxin as well, thank you, sir. You have good people in the DFA. Kay Elias Carol at Elias Belen, sisikapin ko na kayo ay makauwi sa inyong pamilya. Kung hindi man ngayon ay naway sa lalong madaling panahon. Uh, before I proceed further, I'd like to ask uh, the committee secretary to identify the resource persons here. And then, oh, no, let's, uh, let's hear first the opening remarks of Sen. Joel, and then I shall ask uh, Comsec to acknowledge our other, uh, our resource persons. Sen. Joel, ahead, you have the floor. Go ahead, Madam Chair. We can acknowledge them first. I don't mind. Oh, all right. All right, Sen. Joel, in that case, Comsec, uh, paki-acknowledge po yung ating mga resource persons. Madam Chair. Yes, uh, Good morning, everyone. Uh, Madam Chair. Oh, I'm sorry, Comsec. Yes, uh, Sen. Aimee, please. Eh, Magpa-follow up lang ako kasi nung previous hearing, nagtanong ako ng listahan ng countries where Filipinos are trafficked the most. Pa-follow up lang ako kung uh, natanggap ba ng komite yung listahan kasi wala pa sa akin eh. Tatanong sana ako dun eh. Salamat, Sen. Aimee. Comsec, have we received... Um, that data requested by Sen. Aimee, the list of countries to which our kababayan are trafficked. Your Honor, the committee has not received uh, any from uh, the for that uh, from that list. In that Thank case, you very much, uh, Madam Chair, Palo. Yes, uh, very well taken, Sen. Aimee. Salamat. Uh, I the chair repeats uh, the request of Sen. Aimee of the committee to the DFA to please furnish us. Uh, a copy of that list of the countries to which uh, Filipino uh, women, uh, uh, Filipino nationals uh, are trafficked. Thank you, uh, Sen. Aimee. Comsec, please proceed uh, to acknowledge our resource persons. I'm not oh, sure. Just to be makulit. Uh, sorry, Comsec. Yes, Sen. Aimee. Is, who is supposed to give the list, the Interagency Council or the DFA? Sen Aimee, I would say it would be both the DFA and yes, uh, Sen Aimee is right, as well the IACAT. So uh, we make that request as well to the Department of Justice, uh, which chairs the IACAT. Thank you, uh, Sen Aimee. The reason for chair, uh, dahil um, nabanggit nung nakarang hearing na dapat may targeted approach tayo dun sa worst offenders, ika nga. O paano naman tayo may targeted approach Kapag wala naman tayong target at wala pang listahan. So makulit lang po ako. Apologies. Thank you. No apologies necessary, Sen. Aimee. And the not 
kulit. The uh, persistence is very well taken uh, because SENIME knows that uh, in our committee report, uh, in our findings and recommendations, indeed, uh, we may include those targeted responses to the uh, listed countries. So, salamat po, Sen. Aimee. Comsec, pl please proceed to uh, acknowledge our resource persons. Good morning, everyone. Uh, the committee would like to acknowledge the participation of the following resource person. We have from the Department of Justice, we have ASEC Nicolas Felix T. We have State Council Nancy Lozano. We have State Council Mary Grace Canbana. Then from uh, IACAT, we have uh, Wendell Bendonal, Mr. James Gregorio. Then uh, from the Department of Foreign Affairs, we have Executive Director Eric Arribas, Director Dean Jason Ariola, Attorney Anna Iglesias, and Mr. Andre Bauzon. Uh, from the uh, Charge de Affair Vida Zoraya Versosa from the Philippine Embassy in Damascus, we have Attorney Emeterio Dongalo Jr. from the NBI. Uh, from the Bureau of Immigration, we have Commissioner Jaime H. Morente. From uh, still from the Bureau of Immigration, Mr. Allison Chong, Attorney Tristan Toriano, and uh, Mr. Jeffrey Dale Ignacio, together with Attorney Angie Lika Sevilla. From the Philippine Overseas Employment Administration, we have Deputy Administrator Aristodes Ruano, Ruano, and Director Francis Ron de Guzman. From the Department of Social Welfare and Development, we have uh, Director Wilma Navianos and Ms. Gabrielle Fernandez. From the BAS, uh, BLAS F Ople Fallacy Center and Training Institute, we have Ms. Susan, Susana Toots Ople. Then from the Coalition Against Trafficking in Women Asia Pacific, we have Attorney Christina Sevilla. And the, we, from the Center for Migrant Advocacy, we have Ms. Rodora Abano. From, uh, we have Ms. Esther Naval, Ms. Marites Pantonal. From the Bureau of Immigration, we have uh, Mark Darwin Florante Talha, Mr. John Michael Citron Angeles, and Marie. Marisa, um, Maria Nerisa Veneda Manalang. We also have Mr. Erwin Ortanez and Ms. Bien Guevara. From uh, the Child, uh, Child Rights Network, we have Ms. Tony Flores. And then from the Member of Parliament of Bangsamora Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, we have Ms. Michelle Agata. Uh, that's all, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Comsec. Saint Joel, would you like to deliver your opening remarks now? Just, just very, very uh, brief, floor. Madam Chair. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, please allow me to thank you and uh, congratulate uh, our chairperson of the Committee on uh, Women, Children, Family Relations, and Gender Equality, Senator Risa Ontiveros, and our colleague from uh, Ilocos Norte, of course, Senator Manang Aimi Marcos, uh, for bringing to the fore this issue on human trafficking and exploitation, which only increased amid the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Nakakalungkot po, uh, Madam Chair, na sa kasagsagan ng uh, pandemia, business as usual, uh, business as usual lang ang mga traffickers na nambibiktima ng mga kababayan natin, lalo na po dun sa Middle East. Dun sa tanong kanina ni Sen Aimi, uh, I, I, I still remember distinctly, sa Middle East yung pinakamadami o pinakamataas ang konsentrasyon ng mga Pilipino at doon marami din pinakamadami ang uh, ang trafficking no kung totoo pong may mga kasabwat pa sa Bureau of Immigration kaya uh, nabenta ang mga Pilipino sa Syria eh, lalo na pong uh, kailangan pagtuunan ito ngayon ng uh, pansin uh, we support just want to put on record that we support the uh, Senate resolution numbers uh, 631 and 627 because they establish more rationales for our proposed uh, Department of Overseas Filipinos or DOFIL, which we are uh, 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 deliberating uh, in, in, in the Committee on uh, of, of Labor, uh, whether it's uh, Department or National Overseas Employment Authority, as Sen IME proposes. It will also help us uh, craft much needed uh, pieces of legislation uh, to end human trafficking, which perpetuates uh, forced labor 
and uh, modern slavery, mostly of women and children. Uh, we found out in one of our hearings, uh, and I would just like to share this uh, to the body, uh, that illegal uh, recruitment leads to human trafficking. It disgusts me that our track record uh, chasing and bringing illegal recruiters to justice is very poor. In fact, out of the 295 cases against illegal recruiters endorsed for preliminary investigation for the past five years, for the past five years, only 25 led to a conviction. In fact, the past uh, year, only two uh, were convicted. So yung question talaga, bakit ganon? No? And uh, Dole, I remember, informed us that most of the victims were were willing victims kasi esyo, al alam, alam naman ng ating mga kababayan na illegal recruiter, uh, uh, illegal, recruiter illegal yung recruiter nila uh, pero kinakagat pa rin nila dahil nga po kapit sa patalim talaga sila. Uh, isa pang problema, marami po sa mga illegal recruiters ay wala naman daw po sa Pilipinas. So mukhang malaki po talaga, uh, Madam Chair, yung problema natin sa third country recruitment. Uh, yung where Filipino workers legally employed in a foreign country uh, are recruited illegally to work in another foreign country. Dahil napakahirap nga po i-monitor ng gobyerno ang mga third country recruited workers, eh, nalalaman na lang po natin uh, sa mga imbahada natin yung tungkol sa kanila kapag uh, nasa alanganin o may mabigat na silang problema na kinakaharap. And uh, siguro, Madam Chair, you would recall last Congress, if I remember, I think 2018, we both filed a resolution uh, on social dumping, uh, Madam Chair, and uh, the the plight of the uh, reported 22 Filipino truck drivers in Padborg, uh, Denmark. Ang um, kagandahang balita naman, we are pleased to know, nakita ko kanina ng kababayan ko dyan, si uh, Toots uh, Ople, that uh, several OFW groups, some of uh, them are represented in this public hearing today together with the uh, International Organization for Migration, or IOM, came together and formed the Ethical Recruitment Consultative Group that seeks to incentivize the recruiters to engage in ethical business practices. So, ipaubaya ko po sa kanila mamaya yung tungkol po dyan. Ang bottom line po talaga sa isyong ito, Madam Chair, ay ang pagkakaroon ng trabaho dito sa atin. At alam ko pong uh, suntok sa buwan ito ngayon dahil record high yung ating unemployment rate sa Pilipinas, record high ang ating uh, yung nare-repatriate na OFWs at record high din po yung pagkapiga o contraction ng ating ekonomiya. So again, for these reasons, uh, we are very meticulous in our uh, proposed Department of Filipino Overseas and we want to make sure that we are not missing anything and we believe that in this hearing led by our colleague, our uh, very hardworking colleague, Senator Risa, uh, can give us more insights on how we can end the trafficking of Filipinos overseas and how we can um, integrate these insights into the uh, proposal for a Department of Overseas Philippines. Again, Madam Chair, maraming salamat at uh, magandang umaga pong muli sa lahat. God bless. Maraming salamat din po, San Joel. Um, Gano man po ka horrific mga kasama, yung mga kwento, uh, na unang kwento ni na Diana, Carol, Belen, at saka Alice, we've actually found an even more disgusting phenomenon. Uh, bahagi ng business as usual na sinabi ni Sen Joel. Minors. Minors as young as 14 years old being trafficked to Syria. We've interviewed three women who were trafficked to Syria as young girls as they are in the rural areas of Cotabato at the present time, where internet connection is not good, they are unable to join the hearing. Kilala din po natin si Omaima. Traffic noong 20, 2008, sa edad na bisisa is. Ako po'y nagpapasalamat sa Oxfam Philippines at sa Unifil Women para sa interview na ito. Panoorin po natin ang kanyang video.
high school. Uh, may pumunta po dito na isang lalaki na nag-iusap sa akin na uh, mag-apply pa uh, papunta sa abroad po. Dati po nag-aaral ako sa high school. Hindi po ako nakapagtapos dahil po na-recruit po ako ng isang agent uh, dito sa amin. Sabi po niya, gusto ko daw pumunta sa abroad. Sabi ko, opo, nalingnan na po yung isip ko dahil sa pag-apply, papunta sa abroad. Pero hindi po niya sinabi na sa Syria po ang aking pa, uh, destination po. Ang sabi lang po sa akin, mag-apply po, papunta sa abroad. July 7, 7 po, 2008. Pumunta po ako ng Maynila. Bali po na ang nangyari po doon sa bahay ng recruiter ko. Kasi po minor di edad po ako nung pumunta ako ng Maynila na recruit. 16 years old po kasi ako dati. Nung na-recruit ako ng agent. na po yung bahay ng re recruiter ko po. Na-read po ng mga po. Tapos na yung video. Yeah, I apologize for the first seconds na nawalan po ng audio pero in large part po na rinig po natin yung salaysay ni ni Omaima. Meron po palang na-raid na po sila no so mamaya pwede po natin itanong sa ating NBI resource person kung uh, ano po yung nalalaman nila sa ganitong mga raids sa mga lugar na mga minor de edad po ang uh, naka uh, stop over bago sila padala sa ibang bansa. Ah uh, ulitin ko lang po ano mga kaibigan ayon sa laysay ni sa salaysay ni Omaima hindi niya totoong pangalan ang Omaima. Ito ay ang pangalan sa Peking passport na pinagamit sa kanya na magkaiba ang edad sa tunay niyang edad. Nakasanay na lang niyang gamitin ang pangalang Omaima. The committee has a copy of both the birth certificate of Omaima under a different name or her real name and her birth date of 15 December 1991. However, in her passport, her birth date is registered as 10th December 1981. She arrived back in the Philippines in December 2020. Susunod po ay pakinggan natin ang kwento ni Aleya, menor de edad din na nakarating ng Syria noong 2008 din. Pakinggan po natin. Wait lang po. Wait lang po. Saglit lang po. Wait lang po. May problema po. Okay. Uh, apologies, uh, dear colleagues. We're having a bit of a technical problem sa pagpakita uh, ng video ni Alea naman. Ito po. May problem. Uh, Porsche, pwede pa tulong. Right. We're just getting some Hindi ko, technical ayaw, assistance. Ayaw. Para mapanood natin yung maikling kwento ni Alea. Habang hinihintay po natin i-play yung video ni Alea, for the record, her birthday on her birth certificate is August 30, 1992. But on her travel document, her birthday is February 10, 1984. And we have a copy of these documents. She arrived here in Manila 
on November 7, 2020. Ito na po. Ito na po. Habang iniintay po nating maayos yung technical, it's worth noting na pareho sa kaso ni Omaima at sa kani Aleya, uh, kumpara sa kanilang birth certificates, pinalabas sa kanilang travel documents na they were both born a decade earlier than they really were. Para pagmukhang a decade older sila than they were noong pinadala sila sa Syria. Para hindi makitang menor de edad pa sila, pinagmukhang adults na sila at that time. Eto na po. <laughs> Ang gagawin na lang po natin, uh, mga kaibigan, since we're still having technical problems with the video, i-play ko na lang po yung at least yung audio noon para marinig po ninyo yung boses ni Alea uh, dito po sa aking, sa aking audio. So we'll do that na. So ito po si Alea na menor de edad ding nakarating ng Syria noong 2018. Sorry. Sorry, I made a mistake. Uh, muting. Nag-unmute na po ako, dear colleagues, para marinig niyo yung boses ni Leia. I'm sorry, nag I'm feedback. I'm sorry. I'm Sa pagtagal ko po sa kanila po, 11 years po akong tumagal sa amin. Ang una po ay mabait sila sa amin. Ay pagtagal po ay nagbubog po ang palagi niya po pinagpagalita. At bawal po ang cellphone hindi niya po pinagamit ang cellphone po. At the cellphone po ako ang sensor. At naabutan po ako ng gera po sa sila. Umalis yung amo ko po ng nagdagira. Ang sinabi niya sa akin ay susunod na lang ako. Pero ang ginawa ng amo ko ay nagsinungaling sa akin. Hindi niya, hindi niya ako pinasunod at nawala yung passport. Kaya nagtagal ako sa Syria. Ang palaging sinasabi ng amo ko ay walang sasakyan. Is may gira. At Palagi ako naghihingi na sa kanya ng para padala ng pera ang pula po ay sinasabi niya ay mahirap ang padala ng pera. Yung pala ay totoo, hindi niya, hindi niya ako pinibigyan. Palagi nagsisinungan niya ang amin at sa akin. At ako'y iniwan ay nagkasakit po. Saka ako nang lalaman yung sakit ko po, maglupo ako 
sa Inglis. Kasi pumunta po ako ng Inglis. Kasi naghihi po ng tulungan ng magulang po. Natulungan po ako. Um, alright, I apologize na yung audio lang ang naiparinig namin but uh, I belatedly received uh, an advice here about how to show the full video. Susubukan po natin gawin yan uh, during this hearing. Uh, basta po worth noting na nga na yung birthday ni Alea sa birth certificate niya uh, is 1992 pero sa travel document niya her birthday was changed to 1984. And we have a copy of those documents. Uh, nakarating po siya ulit dito sa Manila noong November 7, 2020. Ngunit kung inaakala po natin, no, dear colleagues, na 2008 pa ang mga kaganapang ito, tayo po'y magkakamali. Dahil as late as 2018, mayroon pa ding natatraffic sa Syria na mga menor de edad. Ito naman po ang salaysay ni Len Len. Hindi niya po tunay na pangalan. Bago ako magsimula, kinukumpirma ko na ang pahintulot ng iyong magulang, specifically ang iyong nanay, ay ating nakuha. At ang nanay mo ay katabi mo ngayon, no? nasa paligid ngayong interview na ito. Kinukumpirma mo ito? Uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. Paano ka na-recruit um, papunta sa Syria para magtrabaho? At ilang taon ka noon? Pwedeng po. Nasa-credo mm -hmm. lang yung team ko sa password pati yung ipo ko para patawa po. Ang ibig sabihin ba nun, hindi ikaw ang nag-apply ng passport mo? Hindi po. Yung recruiter po po. So, ang binigay mo, anong binigay mo lang sa recruiter? Wala, wala po akong binigay sa kanya. Pumila. Pumila saan? Pumila ka saan? Doon sa uh, DFA po. Oh, Dito sa Cotabato po. DFA Cotabato. Tapos, um, nakuha mo na yung passport mo. Um, pumunta ka ngayon. Uh, saan ka dumaan na airport pa ano, palabas? Palabas po. Na, na iya po. Saan na iya? Anong taon ito? Ulit? 2019, 2018 po. 2018. Alam mo ba na pupunta ka sa Syria? Hindi. Anong alam mong pupuntahan mo? Alam ko sa Dubai pupunta. Ang alam mo sa Dubai ka pupunta. Tapos uh, nangyari na sa Syria pala. Doon sa immigration, paano ka naka... Paano ka nakadaan o nakalusot sa... Immigration. Uh, binigay lang po yung passport ko. Tapos yung may babae po na nag-guide sa amin. Yun lang po. Tapos mula sa, sa Pilipinas, lumipad kayo ng Kuala Lumpur, tama? Oo po. Sa Kuala Lumpur po. Oo. Uh, tapos? Tapos pagkatapos nun sa Colombo siya, tapos ano yun? Colombo? Colombo. 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 Oh, Colombo. Oh, Doon po sa Colombo. Tapos? Ang over po namin doon. Pagkatapos ng Colombo. Tapos po pagkatapos sa Kuwait na po. Sa Kuwait. Oo. Pagkatapos ng Kuwait. Damascus na po. Doon na po nalaman namin na da, pagkakala na po kami sa Syria. Kasi may, may na, doon namin nakita yung tikit namin. Tapos po pagdating po uh, Damascus, Yun po, yun nga yung po namin, uh, ipamedical kami. Tapos yun, bumalik po kami sa agency. Pero yung agency namin, ayaw na ayaw na kami papalitin ng amo kasi po, mataas po yung binahid sa amin ng amo namin. Kung ano yung dahilan kung bakit ayaw mo na sana sa kanya? Ayaw po sa kanila kasi po yung, uh, mahirap po yung trabaho po na yun. Hindi ka po po nila pinapapayin ng mga ito, sinasaktan ka po po nila. Anong klaseng pananakit? 
kasi ma'am ay minatrata kasi po kung isipalanya po kisa naman po yung dalawang taong mawala po ako. Hmm, okay. Um, huling question ko sa'yo, uh, alam mo ba kung meron pang mga ibang mga minor de edad na o ka, kagaya mo no, na bata pa na uh, dinala rin sa Syria, trinafik din sa Syria? Meron po. Meron lang kung kasama yun. Kung kasama kung na-trafficking po, minor po siya. So, mga mara- ma- mas bata pa sa'yo? Mga ilang taon yun? Kung kasama po na Siguro, 16 pa lang siya ngayon. Ah, 16 pa lang siya ngayon? So, ibig sabihin, parang uh, mga, mga 11 siya, 11. Okay, sige, sige. Sana makontak natin ano, para, ma, para ma-interview din natin. Maraming salamat sa iyo at malaking tulong to para sa uh, pagtitigil na talaga natin ng trafficking. Dahil um, hindi talaga pwede yung pag-traffic ng mga kababaihan at lalong hindi pwede na i-traffic yung mga uh, kabataan. So yan po mga kasama yung um, audio interview uh, ng office ko kay Len Len. And I think we are able now to show you uh, yung video ng salaysay ni Aleya para bukod sa pakikinig ay makikita rin natin siya habang siya ay ikinikwento sa atin yung kanyang karanasan. ako ang tumagal sa ako. Ang una po ay mabait sila. Sorry. Una sa lahat po, assalamu alaikum mga kababayan. Pumunta ako ng ibang bansa, ang napuntahan ko po ay si Repo. Ay una po ay mabait yung amo ko. Sa pagtagal ko po sa kanila po, 11 years po ako ang tumagal sa amo ko. Ang una po ay mabait sila sa akin. Ay pagtagal po ay nagbubug po ako ng amo ko po. Palagi niya po akong pinapagalitan at bawal po ang cellphone. Hindi niya po ako pinagamit ng cellphone po. Nagka-cellphone po ako ng 2017. At naabutan po ako ng gera po sa siri po. Umalis yung amo ko po ng nagka-gera po. Ang sinabi niya sa akin ay Susunod na lang ako. Pero ang ginawa ng amo ko ay nagsinungaling sa akin. Hindi niya, hindi niya ako pinasunod at nawala yung passport ko po. Kaya nagtagal ako sa Syria. Ang palaging sinasabi ng amo ko ay walang sasakyan kasi may gera. At palagi ako nagihingi na sa kanya ng para padala ng pera ang magulang ko ay sinasabi niya ay mahirap magpadala ng pera. Yung pala ay totoo, hindi niya, hindi niya ako binibigyan. Palagi nagsisinungaling ang amo ko sa akin. At ako'y iniwan ay nagkasakit ko. Saka ako nang lalaman yung sakit ko po, nandun po ako sa embassy ko. Kasi pumunta po ako ng embassy. Kasi nagingi po ng tulong ang magulang ko at saka mag-anak ko po. Natulungan po ako magka-uwi. Ayan. 
Ayan po mga colleagues, uh, we've been able to view uh, the video of uh, Alea. Balikan ko lang si Len Leno sa birth certificate niya. Siya ay pinanganak noong September 7, 2004. Ngunit, uh, tulad din sa nangyari kina Umayma at Alea, ngunit sa passport ni Len Len, uh, August 17, 1994 na. Siya po'y nakauwi sa Pilipinas nitong early January or noong early January 2020. For the record, gusto ko lang linawi na ang nanay-nanayan na tinutukoy ay yung house mother ng mga wards doon sa shelter na nasa poder din ng embassy. And for clarification, nung siya, si uh, Len Len ay uh, nasa shelter ng embassy, siya ay 15 years old. Sabi kasi sa video, 14 pa rin. So 14 siya dumating sa Syria. Pero nung panahon niya sa shelter, na tumagal ng ilang buwan, 15 to 16 uh, years old na siya. Pero menor de edad pa rin. So tatalo na po uh, tayo sa mga katanungan. Uh, una po kina Alison Chong, Alex at Dale Ignacio. Alex, yung isang napapansin ko, no? Bakit tila mga Muslim na batang babae? Si Naumayma, Aleya, si Lenlen, tila mga Muslim na batang babae ang kalimitang nabibiktima. Ang isa sa mga lumalabas na teorya ay dahil pinapasuot o nakasuot sila ng hijab para hindi nakikita yung mukha nila at di makikita, di mahahalatang bata pa sila. Is this something that you can confirm, Alex, uh, batay sa mga karanasan nyo? Uh, Madam Chair, based po sa experience namin as frontline immigration officers, mm -hmm. uh, pag mga ganyan po, OFW na nata-traffic, malaki po talaga yung percentage na nanggagaling sa, sa rural areas mm -hmm. kasi doon po sila nagre-recruit. So, uh, sa tingin ko po, nakaka-influence yun doon sa bakit uh, Muslims yung Muslim women yung nata-traffic dahil doon po nangyayari yung recruitment doon po sa rural areas ng Mindanao. Pero at the same time po, kung yung mga Muslim women po kasi is nakabelo naka po sila and then minsan nga po, uh, mata lang po yung kita. So it adds a layer of parang... Uh, Although unintentional po siguro, no? kasi we, we respect na, na part po yun ng religion nila. Pero okay. in a, from the viewpoint po ng immigration officer, mahirap po i-profile yung passenger kasi nakatakip po yung mga muka nila. So it adds a layer of camouflage po. Mas madali po silang ma-traffic, mas prone po sila sa trafficking. At the same time po, uh, Madam Chair, Gusto ko po i-highlight na hindi, hindi po ba dahil sa outbound pastillas, mm. pag nakalista po yung pasahero doon sa Viper Group, hindi na po talagang uh, uusisain ng officer yon Tatataka na lang po yun. So hindi po na, na po profile masyado. And I would like to uh, highlight lang din po na Sinabi ko po ito ng first hearing po natin na victims din po mm -hmm. yung mga frontline immigration officers. Kasi hindi naman po sinasabi ng mga boss o ng mga nagsusupply sa kanila na minor po yun. Tapos uh, sunod lang po ng sunod, tatak lang na tatak, sunod lang po ng sunod sa leaders. Yun po. Okay Alex, pero nabanggit mo rin no, na uh, itong mga nare-recruit, itatraffic, uh, lalo na mula sa rural areas, bagamat hindi lang mula sa rural, pero marami din mula sa rural at hindi lang sa uh, uh, predominantly Muslim areas ng ating bansa, sa iba rin. Pero in these particular cases, ni-recruit nga sa, sila sa Muslim rural areas at uh, either naka-hijab or naka buong katawan nga kung burka. Uh, but nabanggit mo na nasa Viber list din. Nasa pastillas list din. So, can you confirm, tama ba, na itong dumadaan na underage girls na ang dala ay fraudulent passports, nandun din pala sa mga listahang iyon? 
So far po, dun sa mga na-check po natin, May 28, parang May 28 yan. Ano po, uh, kasama po. Kasama po doon sa outbound pastillas. Kasi may mga minor po na nasama po doon. Yung binanggit mong petsa, Alex, na May 28, nakaraang taon yun, 2020, or anong taon yun? Yung, uh, yung mga screenshots po natin, yes. yun po yung uh, 28, 28, yun ako bumalik Opo, yun po yung nakuha po nung uh, around year ng 2018 po. 2018. 2019, right. 2018, 2019 po. Okay. At kung 2018, around the year na tinraffic si Len Lenz, ba? Yung ating pinakabatang uh, nagbigay ng testimonya kanina lang. Uh, yes. Okay, salamat Alex. Dil, kapag may dumadaan sa immigration na Ganon, uh, either naka, naka hijab or iba pang um, traditional uh, wear uh, ng mga babaeng Pilipina na musim. Pinapatanggal ba yung belo nila kapag dumadaan sa immigration? Um, based po kasi sa experience ko, Senator, mm. uh, dahil nga po dun sa religious practices nila, parang mm. ang protocol po is uh, magtawag ng female officer para tingnan yung yung nakahijab kung same sa passport di ba yun po yung protocol ayun po mm-hmm. okay pero palagi bang ganon or kapag ka lamang may suspicion na uh, napukaw sa sa isip nyo na baka potential victim of trafficking sila yes, lagi sir. bang nag so kapag lang may suspicion at kapag nasa Pastillas Viber List, has it ever happened at tinatawag pa rin yung female officer para tignan ang mukha nila or hindi na? Um, ang alam ko po, Senator, kapag nasa list po yung passenger, uh, wala na pong tanong-tanong. Okay. Saka lumalabas, uh, ano po, uh, Dale at Alex at uh, dear colleagues, no? napaka cynical talaga nito. Uh, yung hijab bilang isang kasuotan at importanteng cultural symbol. Legitimate choice ito na nire-respeto natin. Nire-respeto ko rin bilang sila yung mga kabaro ko, mga kababayang Pilipina na uh, sumusunod sa Islam. Pero to think na ito pa ay ginagamit para sila ay abusuhin. No? Napaka-terrible po on, on several levels. Last question siguro sa ngayon, uh, Alex at Dale. Normally ba, kinihingan nyo ng birth certificate yung mga dumadaan na babae or uh, other forms of identification nila bukod pa sa, sa passport? Uh, hindi ba ginagawa yan or dapat ginagawa yan kung may ma, mabuksang suspicion sa isip ng immigration officer? Uh, in the nor- Your Honor, in the normal course po ng uh, primary inspection, mm. titignan lang po ng uh, officers ay yung passport and then yung POEA documents po like the OEC. Mm-hmm. Pag- po yung hihingiin nila. Kasi limited din po yung time ng immigration officer to screen each passenger. Mm-hmm. So, normally po, yun lang po yung hinihingi. Lalo na po pag, naka, pag nakatakip po yung muka ng passenger, mm-hmm. Uh, ayun nga po, pinapalipat sa female officers. So, it adds an additional time po doon. So, pag nagkakaroon po ng doubts sa passenger, uh, ang normal process po dyan ay nire-refer sa TCEU members. At that time, TCEU. Uh, naging TCEU member ka, diba? So, ganun po, nire-refer sa TCEU members for them to to uh, interview the passenger doon po sa interview areas. Alright. So may pagkakataon. Yes. Specific. And may pagkakataon tayo during the hearing, tanungin yung mga TCEU, currently serving TCEU members uh, sa BI, sa mga resource persons natin. And of course, Alex, sabi mo kasi na in the normal course of inspection, at syempre kapag nasa Viber pastillas list na, parang normalize na na 
okay yung uh, pagdaan nitong pasaherong ito kahit pa posibleng may suspicion na uh, mabuksan sa isip ng individual uh, inspection officer. Yes, Sir Honor. Para nagiging express lane po. Tuloy, tuloy. Right. Okay, so express lane. Kaya lang nagiging express. Kung traffic person pala, kung traffic young woman or girl, nagiging express lane pala towards uh, exploitation abroad. All right. Salamat uh, sa ngayon, Alex at Dale. Uh, tuloy po. Uh, yes, Senator Aimee, please. Madam Chair, kung nasa topic pa rin tayo ng immigration, makiki-update lang po ako kay uh, Commissioner Morente uh, tungkol dun sa pinangalanan ng mga BI officers kasi nangako siya na may gagawin, gagawin siyang aksyon tungkol dun. I recall that uh, the four immigration officers that were named as having stamped the exit documents of at least four of our Filipino women trafficked in Syria were Mark Darwin Talha, Nerisa Pineda, John Michael Angeles, and Irvin Ortanez. May we know what uh, the uh, Bureau of Immigration has done um, in order to end this continued trafficking? Thank you, Sen. Aimi. And for the record, um, Mr. Talha, Mr. Angeles, and Ms. Pineda Manalang are also present here in our hearing. But can we hear first uh, from Commissioner Morente to please address the question of Sen. Aimi? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honors. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Ma'am Aimi. Good morning, uh, good morning uh, Senator Monteveros. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. On the question of uh, the uh, investigation of the immigration officers, last 18 March, uh, Your Honor, I created a fact-finding committee to investigate the immigration officers. Uh, about 43 of them. This includes the four immigration officers who cleared the overseas Filipinos mentioned in the investigation. And uh, last April 30, the fact-finding committee has submitted already their uh, report. Mm -hmm. And uh, yesterday, I have forwarded to the uh, Department of Justice the fact-finding uh, report uh, with uh, recommendations for uh, the consideration of uh, the Department of Justice on the charging of, uh, of these uh, immigration officers in... Uh, for several uh, violations, from ranging from grave misconduct, gross neglect of duty, uh, and uh, the like, Your Honor. Mm. Yes. Thank you very and much. And before Senator proceeds, Commissioner, please, uh, would it be possible to furnish the committee a copy of your fact-finding report? Uh, we will, Your Honor. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Please proceed, Senator Thank Sorry. you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Morente. In the meantime, uh, our, uh, the four officers aforementioned uh, under preventive suspension or any other type of admin uh, sanction? Uh, yes, Your Honor. They are, uh, they have been, uh, I, I'll check Your Honor. But as far as I know, uh, they have been relieved from airport duties. Uh, I'll update you, Your Honor, uh, on the uh, status of these uh, officers uh, at present. Oh, kasi dapat yata masuspenso kaagad kasi dapat beyond the shadow of a doubt. Pag kinakabahan na tayo at uh, pinangalala na nga ng mga kababaihan na takot na takot, eh talaga namang kinakailangan siguro aksyon ng kaagad. But uh, uh, the reports uh, that position of Sen. Aimee Commissioner Morente, please yes, uh, yes, update her uh, and the committee by the end of this hearing, Commissioner. Yes, ma'am. Uh, that's the main problem on... Uh, I cannot just suspend uh, these people. I have to only conduct the uh, the fact finding uh, committee. But uh, I have uh, I have endorsed it to the Department of Justice. Wala ako kasing administrative sanction na pwedeng gawin ng commissioner dahil they are appointed uh, by the Department of Justice and the suspension of these people uh, rest in the. Uh, authority of the Secretary of Justice, Your Honor. But I, I have relieved them Ang um, um, pagkaalam ko, Commissioner, their, uh, meron naman kayong magagawa, yun nga lang, at least matransfer man lang or uh, ma-preventively uh, suspend, or uh, talagang uh, kailangan pa DOJ action kahit uh, simpleng, uh, simpleng sanctions lang? 
Sen Aimee, I think that that issue is also addressed by the bill you have filed and that That's is pending right. the right, to update the BI. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, and yes, we will ask the DOJ about this also right after Commissioner Morente. So Commissioner please, Morente, please proceed to Sen yes, Aimee's questions. Actually, uh, these people, including uh, the others, were already relieved from their post. That's the okay. uh, action that I can take. Uh, yung, yung nung sa suspension, even... A one-day suspension is not within the authority vested on the commissioner. But uh, the Secretary of Justice is continuously following it up. And uh, we have submitted yesterday the result of the fact-finding with the uh, recommendations uh, on the charging of uh, these people uh, so that the Secretary can suspend them. Yes, thank you very much, um, Mr. Commissioner. Um, as long as we're guaranteed that the same four are uh, no longer in a position to be stuck mm -hmm. to take passports yes. once again. Thank yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They're out of the airports already. Sen, so, I mean, if you'd like, we could ask now DOJ ASIC T to respond to uh, to give the department's feedback, if he may already, to the fact finding report. Uh, of uh, Commissioner Morente. Asekti, could you, are you able to comment already on the report submitted yesterday by Commissioner Morente to your department? Uh, uh, good morning. Including this, yes, Asek, including the status of the four uh, named uh, personnel uh, who were also followed up just now by Sen Aimee. Asekti. Madam Chair, I have yet to personally see the fact-finding report forwarded by Commissioner Mervente to the DOJ. But what I will do after this meeting is that I will coordinate with the use in charge for immigration uh, to find out the status, as well as to, 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 to ask what possible next steps the DOJ can implement. And we will update the committee on this. Thank you, ASEC. And the committee hopes that the department will act positively on the Bureau's recommendations of charging these 43 uh, named personnel for uh, offenses ranging from grave misconduct and the others mentioned by Commissioner Morente. Uh, yes, Madam Chair. More often than not, we the, the department adopts the recommendations of the, the BI on these matters. Thank you, ASEC. The, the committee looks forward to that. Thank you, uh, Sen Aini. I'll continue uh, uh, the questioning uh, of our resource persons from the BI. Uh, Commissioner Morente, if, if you could stay on with us. Po. Madam Chair, can we hear? Madam yeah, Chair, I'm sorry. It's all right. Oh, Joel, yeah, Sen Joel, Joel, please. Yeah, please. Uh, just, just to point out uh, one more thing with uh, Commissioner Morente. With regard to the uh, Bureau of Immigration's uh, one strike scheme meron pa rin po ba ito kasi i think it's important to note na ito habang ginagawa natin ito yung mga na naiiwan o nandiyan pa rin sa BI at least may alam ho sila na meron tayong mekanismo to check on this and uh, that they will uh, face the uh, full force of the law pag uh, may ginawa silang kalokohan is it still there and uh, intact uh, sir uh good morning uh, your honor senator Villano and sir uh, Nandiyan po yan. Uh, actually, on the part of the commissioner, even uh, simple uh, reports that I read in the papers, I immediately motoproprio act on it, uh, relieve these persons, but uh, that would be only up to the level of uh, section chiefs because uh, if the uh, persons uh, complained are uh, were designated uh, based on department order from DOJ, I had to seek the uh, clearance from uh, the Secretary of Justice and justify the relief of their persons. But uh, we act on, I act on it uh, instantly, especially even if uh, the reports come from uh, the social media. Uh, that is my instruction to, uh, to my chief of staff uh, and to the other uh, officers uh, under me. Your Honor. Thank, thank, thank you, Commissioner Morente. I, 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 I trust you and uh, uh, may experience na ako sa inyo, kagaya nung report ko sa inyo dati dun sa SM Ora, dun sa pagbibigay ng, uh, ng uh, special working permits and uh, pati nga yung security guard na kasuhan. And uh, that's, that's a good thing. No? Ang importante lang ho is tuloy-tuloy po ito, masustain. And if there's anything we can do uh, to help you, uh, 
please let us know. And again, uh, at the end of the day, this is an aid of legislation. Kung meron kaming uh, po pwedeng gawin uh, uh, to your charter and to, to ensure na magawa po ninyo yung trabaho nyo. Kasi sunod-sunod po, madaming uh, challenges po kayo na nangyayari dyan sa, sa inyong uh, ahensya. And uh, we're just here to help. Thank you. Uh, yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Sen. Joel. Commissioner, a uh, quick follow-up lang, and it should be fairly simple po. Um, hindi pa yung buong fact-finding report on the 43 personnel, pero yung lang update po sa apat na IOs na pinangalanan ng previous hearing and also followed up uh, uh, a while ago by, by Sen. Aimee. Ano na po yung update sa status nila? Uh, Ma'am, they are relieved already from the airport. Uh, they were... Uh, directed to submit their explanations and uh, in the fact-finding. And the fact-finding uh, committee has uh, recommended for the charging of uh, grave misconduct for uh, the for Talha or Tanya Spineda. Uh, the other one, Your Honor, uh, we need the fact-finding committee has informed me that they need the a sworn statement of the uh, the traffic uh, uh, we woman and mm -hmm. uh, the De Department of Foreign Affairs has informed us that uh, has informed the uh, fact finding that uh, they will soon uh, provide provide that for uh, to the fact finding and uh, subsequently he will also be charged for grave misconduct. All right. Thank you, Commissioner. And indeed, uh, in, you know, in fairness to DFA, they have been very supportive in um, following up the status and the seeking of accountability from these four named personnel. At maintindahan nyo naman, Commissioner, yung interes uh, namin sa komite kasama na sina Sen. Aimee at Sen. Joel. Because uh, really seeking the accountability from mm -hmm. those proven having been engaged in trafficking and bringing justice to the trafficking victim survivors. Ito po yung nakikita, Commissioner, ng komite na susi para once and for all basagin itong sindikatong ito and put an end to this kind of victimization of our women and now uh, also our children. So to go to these um, underage uh, women or these young girls, uh, Commissioner, no, has the Bureau noticed also a pattern of labor trafficking of underage individuals particularly from Muslim Mindanao. Uh, modus operandi po ba yon yung pinansin ko po kaninang napakasinikal na gawain na uh, yung nakahijab uh, ang uh, tinatarget ni Mari Cruz para hindi makita ang mukha nila? Uh, yes, Your Honor, I confirm it. Uh, actually, these are the challenges faced by uh, our immigration office. Commissioner, na mute yata kayo. Commissioner, hindi po namin kayo marinig. Commissioner, naka mute po kayo. Okay, unmute. Sir, sa airport. Yes. No, ma'am. Uh, All right, hello. I can hear you again now. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I confirm the observation uh, made by the committee. Your... Commissioner, na mute po kayo ulit. Baka may problema sa signal, Commissioner Morente. Hello. Yes, Commissioner, I can hear you again. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I am uh, naririnig na po, ma'am. Naririnig na po. You were say okay. starting to say that you're confirming certain observations of the committee. Yes, ma'am. I, I I confirm it uh, in consultation with uh, the chief of the uh, TCEU, the Traffic Control Enforcement Unit. Mm -hmm. Just for the information of the body, we have three units uh, in the airport that's conducting the departure and uh, arrival formalities. The first one is the counter officers. They only have to process the uh, passengers for 45 seconds. We mm -hmm. have the Border Control Enforcement Unit to conduct the profiling to check if uh, suspected traffic persons ba ito, and the Border Control Enforcement Unit that conducts the secondary inspection. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in 2018 po we had uh, intercepted 182 suspected mm -hmm. underage or minors while in 2019 uh, 21 were intercepted a total mm -hmm. of 203 for uh, 2018 and 19 2020 po um, medyo uh, I have to get the uh, statistics yet na right. considering na nagkaroon no, ng pandemic but mm -hmm. uh, majority of the passports were issued by DFA Cotabato Mm -hmm. And uh, in fairness to the DFA, uh, as early as 2018, nag-coordinate na po sa akin si mm -hmm. DFA USEC uh, Ariola, mm -hmm. uh, requesting the immigration, requesting me to subject to strict scrutiny mm -hmm. yung passports po issued ng Cotabato, field office nila, because uh, they also noticed that uh, May mga fraudulent, uh, ano, kasi na-intercept na, na nga rin po kami ng mga fraudulent uh, acquired passports uh, using mm -hmm. fake birth certificates. Kasi upon nag-admit po yung mga pasahero na they are underage. Uh, for domestic helpers po kasi, just for the information of the body, ang minimum age po for domestic helpers, for them to be allowed, is 23 years old, hindi po 21 mm -hmm. years old. So, okay. pag um, suspected, pag 22 years, years old ka, you are still considered a minor for deployment as domestic helper kasi it's a PUEA DOLE policy. Mm -hmm. So, ang challenges nga po ng ating immigration officers is profiling, especially during the pandemic because of the face mask, the face shield, the hijab, or the veil. Mm -hmm. But uh, upon secondary inspection po, uh, especially pag mga uh, isa rin po palang tinitingnan, just for the information of everyone, nag strict uh, profiling din po, uh, inspection of uh, the passports, ang ating TCEO. For passengers, uh, Filipino outbound passengers going to Hong Kong, mm -hmm. Singapore, Malaysia, Indonesia, kasi these are the uh, common transit points going to yes. uh, the Middle East. So, uh, ang isa rin pong challenges nga ng ating immigration officers is na-coach itong mga pasahero na ito, mga minors, kung paano sagutin ng immigration officers. But uh, in the secondary inspection, Your Honor, pinapatanggal po ng CEU, uh, gaya ng sinabi ni Del Ignacio kanina, using a female uh, TCEU officer para mm. makita talaga yung full face ng pasahero. Mm. Commissioner, um, well, mabuti po talaga na naka-intercept kayo ng 203 no, minors outbound noong 2018-2019. Although that 2018, yun po yung yung taon na nakalabas si si Len Len. Ano po, hindi po siya na-rescue bago pa siya ma-traffic ma sa Syria. Yung 203 po na rescue, may kasama din po ba diyang mga uh, underage Muslim girls na nakasuot ng uh, ng hijab or uh, wala po? I, I note also kasi, Commissioner, uh, information that some uh, young Filipino and Muslim girls were trafficked, for example, uh, to Saudi Arabia no? bukod, pa sa, bukod pa sa Syria. So may na-rescue po ba tayong mga batang babaeng Muslim natin in those, at least in those years, 2018-2019, among the 203? Uh, Your Honor, ito pong 203, these are underage, suspected underage or minors po. Okay. Uh, mga minors po ito. Eh. Pero yung mm -hmm. sa total po ng na-intercept ng PCEU, uh, it's around 1,070. Uh, mm -hmm. This involves, this includes the non-minors, uh, Your Honor, and all of these uh, minors na na-intercept were endorsed to the IACAT for investigation. And I was told uh, in some of the revelations of the trafficked uh, women, uh, follow-up operations by the NBI uh, resulted to some positive uh, results, Your Honor. Okay, that's very good, uh, Commissioner. But just for the record, were any of the um, targeted trafficking uh, victims na underage, were any of them young Muslim girls na naka-hijab? Uh, 
I will uh, have to get the Thank you. Uh, Thank you. specific uh, numbers, Your Honor, and provide okay. the committee of this uh, uh, requirement. Salamat, Commissioner. Okay, now moving backward by a decade to 2008, uh, ma-identify po ba ng records ng Bureau kung sino nag-stamp ng passports ng mga outbound passengers noong 2008, yung mga tinraffic na underage noong 2008? Uh, I we will try to... Uh... To check our system, ma'am. Uh, just give us the the names, and uh, we will uh, check on the travel records. Uh, I think 2008. Uh, Najam pa naman po siguro makukuha pa All right. We'll do that yes, then, Commissioner. At salamat yes, po sa inyo. And then prior po to this hearing, the Commissioner knows that I reached out to the Bureau of Immigration para malaman kung sino naman yung nag-stamp ng passport ng ating 2018 survivor, si Len Len. So, pwede po bang malaman ng komite for the record, Commissioner, yung pangalan ng I.O. na involved? Uh, I love to consult my staff, ma'am. Uh, wala ko kasing sinabi sa akin to provide the... But uh, we can give the... We can check our records uh, if only we have the real name so that we can check on the travel records. And I'm pretty sure we could... Uh, uh, check on who the uh, immigration officer who cleared the passenger. Salamat, Commissioner. Actually, pinrovide na po ng office ko yung totoong pangalan ni uh, alias Len Len. And uh, in fairness sa inyong bureau, uh, finurnish na po sa opisina ko yung pangalan ng I.O. Kung pwede lang po Ay, siguro yes, i-furnish nila po sa kay Commissioner. I just need it on the record in this hearing uh, mula po kay uh, Commissioner dahil may may follow up uh, query din po ako tungkol sa kanya commissioner but i can return to that uh, particular yes, question later yes, salamat sir yes sir and commissioner uh, pwede niyo po ba akong tulungang maintindihan kapag po yung pinakitang passport ay ang date of birth more than 18 years ago kunyari from the date of presentation and inspection of passport wala nang probing questions as to the issue of minority yung possible minority nung passport bearing passenger na iyon. Well, I think pa ma the immigration officer and the primary sa primary inspection. Uh, Napo. If uh, they suspect the passenger to be a minor or uh, the appearance of this her picture is not uh, does not speak uh, actually of her real age, uh, they, mm -hmm. he, uh, she is referred to the Travel Con Control Enforcement Unit will conduct the secondary inspection po. Mm -hmm. They will interview the passenger and uh, our immigration officers in TCEU are trained to conduct the interview to get mm -hmm. the uh, the confession, uh, shall we say, of the passenger whether she is uh, a minor or not. And in most cases, uh, napapa-admit naman po na Mm -hmm. minor yung holder ng passport, especially if the facial uh, features uh, does not speak of very real age, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. As far as the facial features can be uh, visualized, ano po, kung, kung makikita okay. ng, ng buo yung, panga, yung mukha at yes, pwede talagang mm -hmm. ikumpara sa letrato. And speaking po of the secondary inspection, yung outbound passenger involved ay Yun nga, subject dun sa secondary inspection sa investigation, probing questions pa rin para mag-check sa iba pang indicators ng trafficking. Di po ba? I remember from the very first hearings on these resolutions, sabi po ng BI, uh, single woman traveling alone for the first time. I'll return to you, Commissioner. Uh, yes, uh, Sen. Joel. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, just very quick uh, ano lang, interjection. If, if I may, Madam Chair. Um, Please, Sen. you have the yeah, floor. Uh, kanina po, si, uh, our good commissioner, was, uh, uh, he was talking about all the challenges that they're facing, yung mga immigration officers, etc. But I think he failed to uh, mention one great challenge that they are facing is that pag may kasabwat, kasabwat sa BI, kasabwat sa anumang government agency. So, ang, ang, ang gusto ko lang sanang itanong, Madam Chair, dun sa ating... Uh, uh, whistleblowers, kanina binabanggit po nila, no? may discretionary naman yung 
yung uh, uh, may discretionary powers naman yung immigration uh, officer eh, on deck. But as yeah. mentioned earlier, if it is on the list, like yung pastilya sa, sa, nasa list, pinapabayaan na, no? siguro nahihiya, gusto makisama, etc. But was there a time, uh, sirs, uh, sa dalawang uh, magiting na, na gentleman natin na uh, kasama ngayon, was there a time na yung isang immigration officer nakita nila na parang, teka, mukhang bata ito, mukhang minor ito. Or when they were doing the interview, nabosesa nila na parang masyadong bata ito to, to go abroad and, and, and work in this uh, particular uh, uh, position uh, uh, abroad, no? So, with that, uh, may nangyari na ba na ganun tapos nakita nila ay kaso nasa listahan eh so hindi ko na hindi ko na ito ko question eh. was there a time na ganun may nangyayari ho bang ganun sir Sen Joel tanong po ba yan kina Alex at Dale Yes Madam Chair just to point out Please. Madam Chair na part of the challenge that uh, that we should be uh, talking about is that kung may kasabwat di ba kasi kung may kasabwat Ganun din ho eh, uh, mapapaalis din ho eh. So kahit may makita ng red flags on the first uh, phase noong uh, pag-interview, kung kasabwat, hindi rin mahihiya din yung immigration officer, makikisama or takot or kasabwat din, kasali mm. dun sa, sa mafia, then mapapaalis din po. Alex, Dale, pakisagot yung tanong ni San Joel. Ano po, uh, Your Honor, uh, Senator Ian Eva. Actually, tama po kayo doon sa sinabi niyong tatlo na takot, nakikisama, at saka, ayun nga po, part na po nung, nung uh, listahan, nasa listahan po ng outbound pastillas. As an example po, pag nasa listahan po yon nung Viper Group, as I mentioned earlier, express lane na po yan. Pag nakita yung pangalan, hinatid po nung BI Intel doon sa specific counter, Ah, uh, gumawa may examples po tayo niyan last hearing na dinadala po halimbawa sa counter 1 tapos tatatakan na po diretso dahil nandun po yung pangalan sa Viber Group na outbound pastilla tapos hindi na rin po yan haharangin ng secondary inspection dahil kasama rin po sila doon. So sakop po yung buong uh, yung buong airport sakop po. Yung mga gustong pumalag sa pastillas, hindi makakapalag kasi takot po sila. Anong gaga, if you are just one person na may, halimbawa po, may, let's say, there's someone na may hero attitude, anong magagawa ng tapang niya, mag-isa siya? Against people na masyadong makapangyarihan, may position, connections, a lot of money, uh, sobrang dami pong pera, na ma how, how will someone face that? And as an example po, uh, Your Honor, doon sa yung hindi po tinatanggihan, bibigyan po kayo ng slightly different example. There are times po na may dumarating na, na let's say po, uh, Indians na nasa arrival pastillas po na Indians. Ayaw tataka ng isang officer kasi wala pong, wala pong visa yung Indian. Ang gagawin, ililipat lang po doon sa willing na officer, sa susunod lang sa boss na, na natatakot, na ayaw mag-voice out. Meron pa pong mas extreme example, one time, sinama po doon sa listahan ng mga Chinese passengers, Pakistani naman po na passenger. So nag, pag ganun po, nakita ng immigration officer na we are not, we are not being uh, selective or racist. Pag Ako po, nagki-clear po ako ng mga passengers from the Middle East, like one from Pakistan. Pag nakita po namin good yan, may kita namin, uh, doktor, doktor pala, magsa-seminar dito, ah, magbabakasyon lang pala, businessman. Okay po yan. Pero like for this example po, Pakistani, nagbabayad po sa pastillas, bakit po magbabayad ka kung wala kang tinatago? So sinama po yan sa listahan ng mga Chinese, and then inayawan po yan, nagkaroon po ng... Uh, Nagkaroon po ng issue dun sa airport at that time. And then, tumawag lang. Yung, yung officer, quoting the, the PCEU at that time, sabi, uh, sa boss yan, kinlear lang. Kinlear lang po nung, nung isang immigration officer na kung natatakot ba siya o nakikisama or gusto nga po magpabango sa mga boss. So, that, yun po yung uh, sagot ko dun, Your Honor. 
thank, thank, thank you very much, sir. No, uh, you know, just we just wanted to point out na mas malaking challenge ito sa atin kung ganito yung nangyayari and yung kultura na yan, yung norm na yan, kung ganyan ang nangyayari doon sa loob ng isang ahensya, then it will just uh, continue to go on and on kahit na anong training, kahit anong uh, uh, gawin natin. Importante dito talaga uh, system uh, modification and uh, pag may mga red flags na, na nakikita, uh, yun yung, uh, yun yung uh, dapat, dapat uh, tukuyin ka agad. No? But again, I, I cannot uh, uh, give you the uh, uh, million dollar answer on how to address this, but uh, I think that's a, a very challenging, uh, we are in a very challenging situation pag uh, kasabwat ay uh, mga matataas na officials at uh, kasabwat halos yung, yung buong uh, environment na pinagtatrabahuhan ng ating mga kasama sa gobyerno. Salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you. Salamat, Sen. Joel. And uh, to continue his line of inquiry, no, speaking of pakikipagsabwatan, um, Commissioner, alam po namin na minsan hindi na nire-record yung passport, hindi na nire-record ng IOs. So sa, sa 349 names po na nahanap sa Viber screenshots uh, ni Alex, ilan po doon yung actually encoded sa system? Commissioner, nakamute po kayo ulit. Uh, Your Honor, uh, we would need the names and then uh, we would have it checked and uh, submit the uh, the re response to the uh, question, Your Honor. I would appreciate that, Commissioner, and if possible, together with the update on the four IOs named in the previous hearing na finalo up ni Sen Aimee, ito rin pong ilan sa 349 uh, names in passports were actually recorded. Um, we we have a, we have an answer already from the side of my office, so I would appreciate a validation from the side uh, of yes, uh, the bureau itself. Kasi medyo malaki po yung yung leakage or yung slippage. Na baka pwede nating i connect the dots dito sa gusto nating buwagi na problema ng syndicated trafficking talaga. So uh, I will return to that by the end of the hearing, uh, Commissioner. So to return po dun sa kaso ng mga tulad ni Len Leno po. So a young woman from rural Cotabato traveling alone with no history of previous travel tapos wala pong malinaw na finances para sustentuhan yung kanyang uh, pagbiyahe would probably ano po, or should probably be red flag kung ang claim po niya ay gusto niya mag-tour ng mga bansa na identified na natin as jump-off points for trafficking, di po ba? Dapat do, that would raise red flags in the eyes of BI, di po ba, Commissioner? Uh, yes, ma'am, definitely. Uh, it would uh, be on the, depend on the counter officers and uh, the TCEU uh, at the airports to... Uh, to assess and evaluate the uh, whether the uh, purpose of travel ng tao is uh, really as stated uh, or uh, they, they are probable tourist worker. Your Honor. Salamat, Commissioner. In which case, uh, yung immigration officer involved may have a defense laban po sa charge ng qualified trafficking. Pero siya magiging liable pa rin sa Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act of 2003. Hindi po ba? Tama po ba yun? Yes, ma'am. Approved, yes, ma'am. Thank you, sir. And kung it is syndicated uh, trafficking or trafficking committed by a group of three or more persons conspiring and confederating with one another, yung prescription period is 20 years, tama po ba? Dalawang dekada. Uh, I, I am not really... Uh, will inform on the prescription period, but I will ask. Thank you, Commissioner. Well, for the uh, record, yun po yung prescription period. Opo, two decades. Two decades. Yes, yes uh, Sen Aimi? I, this isn't for the Bureau of Immigration. I was just wondering if there's a representative from the Interagency Council for Anti-Trafficking. Kasi nabanggit ni Chairwoman yung uh, syndicated crime. 
Yes, and Amy, we have here SASP Bendoval and Mr. Gregorio. Uh, SASP Bendoval, could you please take the question of Sen Aimi? Yes, and Aimi, please uh, proceed. Yes, um, I just wanted to know what measures were undertaken by the council to address the issues presented by uh, Chairwoman uh, Ontiveros with the Bureau of Immigration. Uh, baka may suggestions kayo para mas effective tayo or uh, kasi yung aming uh, investigation ay in aid of legislation na napapansin ko lang kasi sa RA 9208 um, which governs IACAT eh, most of the measures may only be availed of by the traffic persons upon their arrival in the country pag nakauwi na ng Pilipinas para mas malabo yung protective measures that can be availed of by traffic Filipinos who remain abroad while they're still stuck there, may nagagawa ba yung ayak at may dapat bang gawin? Good morning, uh, Madam Senator, uh, if I may. Yes, uh, yes please, uh, Prosecutor yes, Bendoval. Uh, thank you, Your, Your Honor. Uh, on the part of the IACAT, uh, as regards to the cases uh, with our OFWs in Syria, we have taken several uh, measures as uh, in assisting our embassy uh, in helping out with uh, the said OFWs. Uh, in fact, we have called this as a Syrian model, wherein uh, the first point of contact of our OFWs are indeed with, the, with our embassies. And, and, and they are uh, at the forefront in knowing exactly what are the, the situation of our OFWs. And, and with that, in any cases of uh, trafficking in persons, uh, our Syrian model has proven that our embassies could take immediately the statements, the testimonies, and the complaints of our of our uh, OFWs at, uh, at that point, and then helping them out in the preparation of uh, their complaint affidavits, and in bringing back those. Uh, those documents as evidence uh, by the repatriated OFWs themselves. And then at that point, uh, when they arrive at our airports, our, our IACAT agents uh, assist them immediately together with uh, the SWD, with our OWA. And right now, I believe that current cases are being uh, are being uh, investigated uh, with the prosecution team as well of the BOEA. Uh, uh, Your Honor, we, we admit, sadly, that there are indeed gaps to, to fill in because uh, what, what we are doing right now is, uh, it's like cat and mouse, Your Honor. Uh, we are just responding to the problem where, in fact, uh, we should be going through the root cause of, of this. And uh, we, we also believe that in, in previous cases, although, although little it may, may appear, we have filed cases on, on, on these recruit, illegal recruiters that led to trafficking in persons. And, uh, and just to, to note on, uh, for, for this body, it, it is not just uh, women and children and even if, if you can remember the cases of uh, several uh, 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 for, for, forgive me for the term uh, uh, certain homosexual or gay persons yeah. that uh, filed, uh, that were subjected into trafficking uh, somewhere in, uh, in the Middle East as well and if I may just interpose that uh, those uh, the cases have been filed in Manila, and and their recruiter, or and the offender has already been convicted by the Regional Trial Court of Manila here. So even though even though uh, the the commission of the offense was committed uh, abroad, uh, we do have extra jurisdictional or extraterritorial jurisdiction over the case, and that that. And, and that the said accused was indeed uh, tried in in our courts here. So, in in so far as the protocols are are concerned within the IACAT, uh, may, may we just note that uh, we are doing our best in in coordinating with uh, the different agencies that we have under the the council, 
and uh, we submit your honors to to any improvement and development that uh, the, uh, the wise legislation may impose. Yes, thank you, Madam thank you, Chair. Honor. Yes, Attorney from Ayakat. I'm sorry. If I may, uh, I'm sorry if uh, I may. Prosecutor uh, uh, Bendoval. Uh, uh, Bendoval. Okay, thanks, uh, Prosecutor Bendoval. If you're the one at uh, the Ayakat. Um, I was just wondering, because you mentioned two things. Uh, firstly, you actually said that uh, uh, you are merely assisting the embassy. Um, is there any value added to uh, taking testimony, complaints, and statements? Di ba ginagawa na rin ng legal ng embassy yan? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, so ano yung dagdag na tulong ng ayakat dyan? Uh, Your Honor, uh, in so far as the taking of testimonies is, uh, is concerned, uh, it, it, it was uh, effectively effective, effectively done by our, in this particular case, our embassy in, in, in Syria. Kaya nga, but you're almost entirely dependent on the embassy. May I yes, ask, ilan bang empleyado ng Ayakat? Uh, right now, Your Honor, uh, it, I don't have the exact figure, Your Honor, but uh, we have uh, we have in uh, agents and personal employees um, amounting to uh, at least a hundred, Your Honor, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, no. Not the reason is I also note that uh, your title indicates that you are only seconded from the DOJ. Is that correct? You're not. Yes, Your Honor. Sayaka. Yes, Your Honor. And if I may, Your Honor. Uh, the the council itself and the secretariat, including the agents and personnel, uh, are not of a plantilla position, Your Honor, and that and that is the, what we are working right now, Your Honor. Yes, I think we're going through another round, you know, for the budget of 2022, and I think it's very important that we finally implement fully the Republic Act for the anti-trafficking, uh, given the increase in the incidents of uh, trafficking throughout the world. Yung ikalawa na binanggit mo, which I think uh, perhaps we can address dun sa budget hearings nga, yung unang concern. Kasi kulang-kulang kayo at uh, mukhang very reliant kayo sa embassy, ano? Kasi nagkataon na effective dun sa Syria, pero kung medyo kulang-kulang din ang tauhan ng embassy, mahirapan din kayo kasi wala naman kayo mapagpadala. Yes, Your Honor. We confirm that, Your Honor. Uh, it is just that the uh, Syrian embassy has effectively done so. Where, in fact, uh, in the previous, I may I, I I cannot speak for the other embassies, Your Honor. Yes. But uh, it, uh, there are instances that uh, dumating na po yung mga repats and uh, victims themselves, and then uh, the first point of contact in investigating is when they return here in our country. Yes. Where in fact, we, right. we, we take uh, we we take note that it would be more beneficial if uh, they have already given their testimonies or their complaints uh, in 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 the country that they are. Yes, that's correct. Because the the issue's always been that uh, uh, the testimonies upon arrival are devalued by the. Uh, by the other country, no? Kasi sabi nila, syempre, under pressure, linuto, etc. So that's one concern. The other thing that you mentioned that uh, perhaps requires legislation, uh, I don't know to what degree my colleagues, my very competent colleagues are here. Um, may sinasabi kayo na ina-address lang ninyo yung, uh, yung nangyari na there's no actual prevention, no prevention of... Uh, anti-trafficking in terms of the projects and programs undertaken by Ayakat at this point. Cut and mouse nga ang pagkasabi mo sa mga recruiter. Um, could you tell yes, us a little bit um, what you had in mind kung anong maganda para you can undertake prevention as well? Yes, Your Honor. We con we, we confirmed that. In fact, uh, uh, if, if, I, if I may go back to uh, to what Senator, the Honorable Senator Villanueva mentioned earlier, that uh, there's a, a very thin line uh, uh, with illegal recruitment and as an effect, uh, the TIP cases. 
So sometimes uh, uh, we cannot just take the illegal recruitment uh, cases per se because most of the time it also involves and uh, and in effect it, it it involves to a trafficking in persons cases. So at 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 one at one point uh, there is an issue of uh, illegal recruitment, and then on the other there is the TIP. So ang ang sa if, if I may, Your Honor, Madam Senator, if, if I may, a humble suggestion that we do we we recognize that there should be more focus on on the on the rights of our OFWs for their own protection and in in preventing meron naman po tayong mga programs in place uh we we re, we really do hope that uh our OF, OFWs in going to other countries know their rights already but uh we also recognize na hindi po natin mapipigilan yung mga kapit po sa patalim. Uh, it is their right to, to go go abroad and find uh, a decent uh, living. Ano po? Pero ang, ang duty po natin is uh, protektahan po talaga sila. Uh, you're, suggesting, po, uh, you're suggesting, Prosecutor Bendoval, that uh, the I IACAT is not involved in the pre-deployment uh, training, seminar, Yung, kumbaga, yung mga hallmarks of uh, a recruiter para alam nila kaagad magduda na sila. For example, may, 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 may uh, coordination naman yata kayo sa DOLE bago mag-deploy ng OF? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, meron naman po. The council is uh, is uh, composed of, the, of these several agencies. Uh, meron naman pong uh, coordination. Ang, ang pinupunto ko lang po, uh, uh, Your Honor, is uh, more more focus po siguro in so far as iakat is concerned we are also focused on the on the uh, trafficking cases right now that uh, has already been has already uh, been done your honor and uh, siguro siguro po uh, pagtutuunan din po namin ng pansin more on the on the preventive aspect uh, dahil po uh, in, in as much as uh, prevention is uh, part of the plans and programs of uh, IACAT, uh, in, 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 we, hindi rin po namin mapipigilan po talaga ang mga kababayan natin, natin na gusto pong uh, magtrabaho abroad. Uh, in fact, there's another issue, if, if, uh, if I may just point this out, uh, Your Honor, our, our nurses right here uh, now are clamoring also that they should be that they should be uh, sent abroad. Uh, uh, pero po, on the part of the IACAT, nagiging metopuloso na rin po tayo na sa mga issues na sa pagde-deploy po. So in, in that sense, Your Honor, uh, we agencies are are coordinating within IACAT po. Yes, but that's right. As uh, Senators uh, uh, Ontiveros and uh, Villanueva know full well, uh, pag nakita namin yung, yung salitang coordination, parang apakalabo na nun eh kasi nagkakaturoan at uh, parang uh, halos walang action at walang budget. Medyo allergic ako dyan sa salitang coordination. Mahirap ang trabaho coordination talaga. Kasi minsan hindi ka pinapansin, tapos halos hindi ka babibigyan ng tauhan or budget. Yes, uh, yes we'll see what we can do and uh, we'll probably call your office in order to craft better legislation that addresses you, prevention and uh, budget issues. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Sen. Aimee. And of course, in Madam fairness Chair. sa IACAT, at least once before na i-improve na nila yung standing natin sa mundo in terms of anti-trafficking initiatives. And uh, the chair joins and I, me, in committing to IACA that we will continue to uh, support the council to become even more effective. Uh, yes, and Joel. Yes, Madam Chair, just a quick intervention no, in the same topic that uh, Senator I, me, just raised. Uh, we'd just like to ask some questions to our uh, good friends uh, from uh, DOJ. Uh, uh, nandiyan pa ba si uh, Sir Wendell? Sir, uh, mm, nandiyan sila. Una, 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 yes, una I, 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 I commend yung IACAT, uh, although somehow it took it took you guys eight years from the expanded anti-trafficking uh, uh, 
uh, Act of 2012 to set up a system like uh, the Integrated Case Management uh, System. No, I think it was launched last uh, July of 2020. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. That's a, a very recent uh, yes. uh, ma management system that the yes. IACAT has undertaken, Your Honor. Yes, I, I'm trying to help out here, no? uh, but of course, just like our dear colleagues here, Senator Risa, Senator Aimee, and myself, we wanted to help you in um, uh, not only in legislation, but also budget season is around, and uh, uh, if there's a need to, to, to really empower and uh, give more funds in ensuring that we'll have enough manpower to uh, to uh, take care of uh, IACAT and uh, to proceed with this uh, ICMS. I just wanted to find out, sir, how often um, is this updated and what information are included in the database? Kasama po ba dito? For example, it covers um, criminal uh, actions uh, only or does it also... Uh, contain administrative cases uh, filed against uh, recruitment agencies. Um, kasi kanina binabanggit nyo po um, yung, yung prevention side. I think kung maganda yung mga uh, uh, information natin, meron tayong uh, maayos na database uh, uh, system, uh, maayos na information system, and ma-engage natin yung public, then we'll be able to to, to help out no, dun sa preventive uh, side na binabanggit natin. Kanina nga po si uh, si uh, Mang Toots Ople also uh, also inform me na ang OWA may may record nitong uh, Madam Chair nitong mga naripat na minors through the years. Um uh, pati POEA may record din sila, may list sila na yung iba galing nga Saudi and yung iba dumaan pa sa legitimate uh, recruitment agency. So again, itong, yes, and Joel, uh, baka we could request or the committee can request those records from OWA yes, of the minors repatriated from the Middle East. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. And at the same time, to follow it up na yung shared government uh, information system, uh, mahigit dalawang dekada nang napasa yung batas hanggang ngayon hindi pa rin maayos. No? And uh, that's one of the main goals now of DOFIL eh, para... Uh, na maayos ito. But going back dun sa question ko, sir, no, uh, again, yung uh, establishment nitong integrated case management system, ano po yung kasama dito and how how often uh, is this updated, sir? Your Honor, uh, given the relatively uh, that the system is relatively new, uh, I, I can say for the moment, Your Honor, that uh, uh, all details as regards to the victim themselves, uh, the name, age, and, and, and the like, uh, is included in that uh, in, in in that system, Your Honor. Uh, the addresses, the, the age, uh, so 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 many specific information, as uh, including the the cases uh, filed. Uh, but if whether if it's I mean, criminal or administrative, nakalagay po. Uh, your Honor, if I may, I, 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 I'm not so sure about the administrative case yet, Your Honor, but uh, it would be a good uh, information item to, to be included. Yeah. Uh, but if I may, Your Honor, uh, the, the one thing that should be highlighted in any information system, including uh, this of the IACAT, is the uh, importance of confidentiality con uh, concerning the IP victims, not only that they are they are minors or, or, or women, but uh, uh, we at EACAT, uh, we are meticulous on the confidentiality. So that's why uh, we also thank the OPLE Foundation or, uh, to Mam Susan in, in, yes. that we have Yes, definitely we agree with you, sir. No? Yes, definitely we agree with you with the confidentiality, but at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure that the system will work no, and that this will be able yes, to... Sure, help our, our kababayans. And another thing, no? so, sige po, siguro kung po pwede, isubmit na lang ano yung mga kasama dito and ano yung, ano yung balak natin, how, how often ina-update itong uh, sistema na ito. But another thing... Then, Joel, if I may, yes, yung mga yes, 
Uh, pwedeng isubmit po ng DOJ ng iyakat sa komite. Please do so, uh, Prosecutor Bendoval. Also because, uh, colleagues, uh, I'd like to be able to I'd like to make sure na yung dalawang witnesses pa po natin galing sa Syria ay makapagsalita dito po sa atin during this hearing. Thank you, San Joel. Please, please proceed. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm about to wrap up, Madam Chair. I just thought it's important to note na if we want yung preventive uh, side of, of things to come in, we have to make sure that the public, uh, they, are, they are also engaged. No? So my, my last question lang, sir, is will, will the information contained in the database also be available uh, to the public? Or at least, uh, will the public be apprised um, of illegal recruiters and human traffickers who subsequently get convicted? Is there an aggregated uh, database of government officials, employees, or of trafficking-related corruption and violations? Kanina nga, binanggit ni Ma'am Toots na yung mismong uh, recruitment agency, mga legitimate recruitment agency, sila din yung nagpadala ng mga minors. Eh. So, yes, ito yung mga bagay na gusto nating uh, i-point out na i-engage natin dapat yung mga kababayan natin para matouch natin yung preventive side na, na sinasabi nating very important. Sir? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. So you agree with me and... Uh, but right now, it's not being, ano, hindi ho siya uh, kayang i-access ng uh, public, hindi siya available uh, to public? Hindi, hindi, po, sir, hindi po, sir. Pero uh, uh, we submit po doon sa sa recommendation that uh, for the sake of transparency except your honor uh, except for the victims themselves yes uh, we yes without uh, without other information ano, yeah without sacrificing uh, the privacy of the victims yes yes your honor we submit thank, your honor thank, thank you sir thank you very much thank you thank madam you, chair uh, salamat po salamat din po san joel uh, so ngayon uh, kausapin po natin ang ating nakauwi ng mga kababayan, sina Elias Alice at saka si Ms. Marites. Ms. Alice, Ms. Marites, sa kabila po ng lahat, welcome home po dito sa atin. Kumusta naman po kayo? <laughs> Ayan, galing po kina Senjo sa ating komite. Ms. Alice, kumusta na po kayo? Baka nakamute pa po kayo. Okay naman po, ma'am Senator. Okay. Okay, mabuti po. Miss Marites, kumusta? Mas masaya. <laughs> Miss Marites, kumusta na po kayo? Baka nakamute kayo, Miss Marites. Okay po, ma'am. Okay, mabuti po. Sa tingin po ninyo, ano pa po ba yung pwedeng gawin para maprotektahan? Ang kagaya ninyo, mga kabaro natin, na ang gusto lang naman ay makapagtrabaho abroad, pero na-traffic sa Syria. Uh, meron bang naging pagkukulang sa pagtugon sa sitwasyon nyo na gusto nyo uh, ituro sa amin dito sa komite? Ma'am, para sa akin, Opo. Uh, sana maging alerto na ang mga nasa immigration. Sana... Uh, lahat ng na, lahat ng nasa airport para malabanan yung illegal trafficking maging ano sila maging alerto lang po sana sila at meron uh, malaki ang pagkukulang talaga sa pagtugon da, uh, dahil sa umpisa pa lang ng paghingi ko ng tulong at pati na rin sa mga kasamahan ko na nasa GC mabiktima ng illegal recruiter. Hindi po natugunan yung mga email namin noon sa GC namin. Pinasok ko po sa GC namin sila Mariel, Josa Mariel Aga ng Omwa at si Ma'am Ariola at si ang dating Amba sa GC namin para makita nila at mabasa nila ang mga hinaing namin. Pero parang nakaano lang sila. Ginawa ko po, nag, nag, naggawa po ako ng GC namin. Lahat ng illegal, illegal trafficking sa Syria, 
lahat dyan minessage ko kaya nag, nag-ipon-ipon kami. Meron pong isang advocate sa GC namin. Tinuruan kami maggawa ng email para magsalaysay kami at ipasa sa mga uh, gobyerno yung mga hinaing namin. Pero wala pong nangyari sa mga nagawa naming email. Halos dalawang taon po kami nag-email. Isa pa po ang... Uh, Sige po, Ms. Marites. Isa lang po ang tumugon sa, sa email namin. Tumugon po sa email ko ang uh, Civil Service Commission. Lumabas po yung letter na repatriation ko. Kaya ang saya-saya sa grupo namin sa GC. Pero nabaliwala po yun. Nag... Tumawag po ako kay Chito Mendoza para ipaalam mm-hmm. kung natanggap niya yung uh, repatriation letter ko na pinadala ng Civil Service Commission. Mm-hmm. Pero wala po siyang sagot. Dalawang taon po akong nag pa-follow up, pati ang asawa ko sa OMWA. Wala pong nangyari. At saka may lumabas po na ito lang pong 2020, nakita ko po sa email ko na binabawi ko na daw po yung repatriation ko. Mm-hmm. Na nakapirma po doon si Miss Ariola. Then sa, sa right side po ang asawa ko pero wala pong pirma ang asawa ko. And then, tinanong ako ng asawa ko, Pumapa- pumayag ka ba na uh, hindi ka mga repatriation? Sabi ko, hindi ko alam. Wala kong alam dyan sa, re- sa binabawi ko na sinasabing binabawi ko yung repatriation ko. Mm-hmm. Meron po akong mga kaptonaya, kaptibaya na, na mga email. Pinasa ko po yan sa DOJ. Ma'am, Senatora. Salamat. Marami salamat, Ms. Marites. Ang dami mong ibinigay na konkretong pwede ma'am, natin gawin. Ma'am, si Alice po ako, ma'am. Ay, sorry, Ms. Alice. Okay, yes, naka-highlight ma'am. kasi yung yung uh, box ni Ms. Marites. Okay, Ms. Alice, marami salamat uh, sa iyo. At niyayaka po namin kayo sa iyong pag-iyak uh, kanina. Okay lang po yun. At marami salamat dito sa mga konkretong Ay, kasi mama, uh, feedback. Ang, ang, ta- ta- Yes, at Miss Alice, tanungin lang natin kaagad ang DFA, no? Ano itong binabawi na repatriation? Pwede po bang uh, uh, itanong uh, kay Executive Director Eric Aribas ba? Uh, magandang Edi Aribas. Uh, magandang tanghali. Yes. yes, magandang tanghali, Edi Aribas. I'm sorry. Ano po itong uh, si- kinuwento ni Miss Alice na binabawi ang repatriation na inisyong letter ng CSC. Uh, sorry po, Madam Chair. Hindi ko po alam yung uh, particular na statement po na ito. Baka po yung aking pong kulig, si uh, Attorney Vida, baka po may mabibigay po siya na information tungkol po dito sa Syria case po. All right. And, and for the record po, uh, yung binanggit na Ariola, Si Sarah Ariola ba ito? Kasi may isa pang Ariola. Malamang po kung ang uh, pinag-usapan po natin yung DFA UMWA, si Undersecretary Sarah Lu Ariola po ang head po niyan. Mm-hmm. I see. Sa lahat po ng mga ganyang concerns po ng ating mga OFW na may problema, ang aming talagang hakbang ay makipag-coordinate po uh, agad-agad sa ating po mga embassies at consulates sa labas para po sila ay mapauwi. Uh, si, ang, kaya nga po, si eh, Attorney Vida po ang napunta sa Syria para ho maayos. Salamat yung... naman. So, yun po yung mga action po na, na kung ngayon po ang na, nababanggit po na ating kababayan po na nasa Syria ng mga problema, ma-assure naman po namin na sa opisina namin po, under sa leadership po ni, sa, ni Undersecretary Sara Luariola, lahat po ng mga problema ay tinutugan naman po natin. Ang aming hong talagang objective ay mapauwi ho sila agad-agad. Kung meron hong mga ganyang uh, conflicting statements po na hindi ho, na hindi na daw sila uuwi or what not, ang ginagawa ho natin siya, pinapa-verify ho natin yan sa ating mga opisyalis sa embassy. Dahil sila ho yung on the ground, sila ho yung talaga ho may contact doon sa OFW para ho makonfirm kung talaga nga ho ba ganun ang kanilang sinasabi. 
kasi ang sa experience so namin sa DFA, ang dami rin ako kasi nagbibigay ng kung ano-anong mga uh, storya or statements. So ang pinaka-importante ko para sa amin ay kung ano ho ang talagang sa loobin at kung ano ho talaga ang statement na binibigay po ng OFW na in distress. So ang, yes po. Yes, well, mar marami, I was about to say lang, maraming salamat, Edi Arribas, uh, and in fairness sa DFA, uh, marami okasyon na malaki yung naitutulong nyo, hindi lang sa aming komite, pero sa ating mga kababayang OFW. Pero gusto ko rin pong, for the record, sabihin na pinapahalagahan po ng komite ang mga testimonya na ibinibigay ng ating mga victim survivors, yung ating mga uh, witnesses, nagbibigay ng kanilang kwentong buhay dito dahil talagang uh, halos ibinayad nila ito ng napakapait na na presyo no yung sarili nilang karanasan at ngayon nais pong i-appreciate ng komite yung kanilang dagdag na feedback kahit yung mga gusto pa nilang i-share tungkol sa kanilang karanasan na hindi pa nila naibahagi sa video noon at ito po ay tinuturing ng chair at ng komite na importanteng feedback na malamang sa hindi magagamit natin iba't ibang uh, ahensya sa executive at kami sa legislatura para nga matigil na itong problema ng trafficking, masingil ang accountability ng mga nagkasala, bigyan ng hustisya itong ating mga victim survivors at ayusin nga po yung mga uh, sistema. Dalawa na po yung issue ng pilit pinababaliktad. Uh, si Lenlen po, kanina, si Lenlen sa recantation daw niya. At ngayon, uh, si Miss Alice na ayaw na daw ng uh, repatriation. So mga seryoso, tama po, uh, Edi Arribas. At importanteng feedback na ating i-consider para uh, bigyan ng solusyon. No? Yung mga tukoy na problema, specific na problema, bunga ng karanasan at leksyon ng ating mga Uh, kababayan. Uh, bawa yung sinabi din ni Miss Alice kanina na di natutugunan yung mga email sa GC. I presume group chat iyan. Tapos ito nga yung seryosong uh, uh, pinalalabas na uh, ayaw na niya ma-repatriate kahit may magandang nagawa ang CSC para sa kaniya na na-issuehan na ng uh, repatriation letter. Uh, tapos yung dalawang taong pagfa-follow up sa isang uh, unit na hindi uh, hindi naging uh, mabunga. So I I hope na lahat po tayo dito ng mga resource persons lalo na tayong nagtatrabaho sa gobyerno ay magiging bukas sa ganitong mga feedback. Of course, idadaan natin sa due process sa fact finding. Pero, you know, tanggapin uh, in good faith na sinasabi ito ng ating mga victim survivors ng uh, ng uh, trafficking dahil uh, sa kabila nung napakasakit ng kanilang karanasan, higit sa lahat gusto rin nilang makatulong sa ating mga kababayan at sa aming mga kabaro at yung mga bata pa pa natin. Um, Miss Alice or at Miss Marites, meron pa ba kayong uh, well, Miss Marites first time niyo po dito sa hearing ng komite, uh, meron din po ba kayong mensahe na gustong ipaabot sa amin uh, at sa mga ahensya ng gobyerno? Meron po ma'am. Ah, okay po. Nakikinig po kami. Sana po. Gusto po na po yung mga illegal reporter na kayo sa airport po. Kasi maraming mga bata po nagpa-abroad. Ano po magturungan natin? Opo. Yun po ang sinusubukang gawin ng komite, lahat naming mga miyembro at yung at aming mga colleagues sa executive. At maraming salamat higit sa lahat sa inyo na uh, nagbabahagi ng inyong kwentong buhay para nga matulungan sila. Meron din ba kayong naisabihin sa ngalan nga nung iba pa nating mga kababayan na hanggang ngayon ay nasa Syria pa yung mga kabaro natin at yung mga bata din? Meron po akong nakasama doon sa kulungan. Pakilakasan po ng konti o baka la lapit po kayo ng konti sa mic para marinig namin kayo? Eh, meron po akong nakasama doon sa pinanggoan ng babaw sa Syria. Isa po siyang Muslim. Baka po daw siya nagtrabaho doon. Katuro din po yung edad niya. 
So kung naririnig ko po kayong malinaw, may isa pa tayong kababayang, isa pang kabaro na Muslim naman na tulad ni Miss Marites noon ay nasa kulungan. Alright, so pagtulungan po nating makuha ang mga detalye at sa tulong ulit malamang ni na Sharjay da Fair Vida sa ating embassy doon ay makuha po natin ang kanyang kalayaan at yung hustisya din po sa kanya tulad po kay Ms. Marites. Nakamute po yata kayo. Sige po, habang habang inaayos niyo po yung audio niyo, tanungin, yes po, naririnig ko na kayo. Opo, ma'am. Eh, sana po maagaran po siya tulungan po. Kasi naawapo ako sa kanya. Naawapo talaga ako sa kanya. Kasi nagal sa years po siya ng kulong doon. Tapos uh -huh. nagkakulang siya ng 15 years. Naawapo talaga ako sa kanya, ma'am. Alright, marami salamat po. Napakahabang taon, ano po, pitong, ta pitong taon. Kung yung dalawang taon nga ni, ni Ms. Marites, napakahaba na, lalo na po ito, triple pa. Sige po, pagtulungan po natin, matulungan siya. At tanungin ko ngayon yung uh, unang tao, kabaro din natin na uh, malamang ay makatulong din ulit sa ganitong sitwasyon. Sharjay da Fair Vida, salamat ay kasama pa pat po namin kayo ngayon kahit ang hali na any comment po ma'am doon sa mga testimonya ni na uh, Ms. Marites at Ms. Alice um, Assalamu alaikum at apo Ramadan ka rin po sa mga kapatid nating Muslim maraming salamat po Madam Chair at uh, your honors for this opportunity so una sa lahat pagbati kay Marites nice to see you at kay Alias Alice masaya naman ako na nandito kayo so gusto ko rin po ipaabot yung pagpapasalamat po kay um, ating Philippine Honorary Consul General, si Mr. Wasim Nana. Kasi siya po yung talagang gumawa ng paraan na magbiyahe from Aleppo to Latakia para wow. matulungan po si Alias Alice. At siya rin po yung tumutulong dun sa mga kaso ni Alea, si Omaima, at siya kasi Alias Ben din. Kasi ang Philippine Embassy po sa Damascus, mahalaga po yung partnership po natin with the government of the Syrian Arab Republic, including mm -hmm. our honorary consuls na tumutulong po sa mga kababayan natin sa mga malalayong lugar. So mm -hmm. gusto ko rin po magpasalamat din uh, bilang dagdag sa nabi SP Wendell Bendoval na um, tunay nga po na Sorry, hello? Parang naputol yes, po yan. Yes, naririnig namin kayo. Sorry, can you hear me po? We can hear you po. Apo, paumanhin po sa internet. Yes po. Okay Thank po. you very much po. So, uh, totoo po na tulong po ng Interagency Council Against Trafficking or IACAT, napakalaking bagay po yun para ma-prepare po natin yung mga complaint affidavits tsaka evidence packets sa embassy kasi uh, malaking bagay po na nandito yung mga POEA lawyers. So nakita ko po nandiyan din yung director ng prosecution division ng POEA. Pati mm -hmm. po yung mga abogado from Blast of the Policy Center at saka yung mga partners natin from the Department of Justice. In fact, noong April 23 po, kasama po si Chief Timi ng Bureau of Immigration TCEU nung nag-interview po tayo kay Alias Alice para mapalalim po yung investigasyon natin. So posible po na uh, lakasan natin yung yung prosecution pillar natin ng anti-trafficking mm -hmm. strategy natin sa pamamagitan din po ng pagkilala na for children the prevention includes not allowing them to enter Syria in the first place so yes. uh, kadalasan po nakikita natin na um, mahirap talagang bakahin yung ganitong klaseng pagsubok para masubpo yung ganitong krimen pero mas mahalaga na we look at it through a whole of government approach na ano man yung mga initiatives na gagawin natin, ano man yung mga reforms natin, should really be recognizing yung factors that increase vulnerability. Ano ba yung intersectionality ng nararanasan nila na sila po ba igaling sa indigenous tribes? So, based sa study natin po sa mga nasa shelter, 16 po sila ang galing sa mga indigenous peoples groups from Mindanao. Tapos, marami rin po sa kanila, so low parents, uh, mga, may mga problema sa pag-iisip. So, the 24 of them experience trauma and the psychological intervention. At marami rin po sa kanila ang mababa ang pinag-aralan. So, yung mga factors na yun po, if you look at it from the 
gender equality, di- disability, and social inclusion, or GEDC na mainstreaming na perspective, mm-hmm. ay dapat na patutukan din po natin maliban po sa Philippine Embassy. Doon pa lang po sa mga communities kung saan ang gagaling, and doon din sila ma-reintegrate after po ng kanilang repatriation. So sa bahagi po ng Philippine Embassy, salamat sa DFA UMWA kasi UMWA po talaga yung tumulong sa atin na mag-approve ng funding para mailabas si Marites Pantonian. Kung maalala niyo po yung last hearing, yung kinumit natin na $5,000 para sa kanyang court penalties, yung Daniels dahil sa krimen. And para po matulungan yung nasa ADRA prison, so I'm happy to share na no May 3, 2021 yung update po natin ay meron pong presidential pardon, may bagong legislative decree na in ang presidente ng Syrian Arab Republic at makakatulong po ito para sa mga kababayan natin na may mga kasong kriminal na yun ang hadlang sa pag-issue ng kanilang exit visa. So kasama po natin ang Syrian government, ang mga abogado natin na kinuha na tumulong sa atin na maituloy yung mga human trafficking cases po sa Pilipinas at sa Syria man. Uh, kapartner din po natin yung Ministry of Justice ng Syria sa ganitong uh, initiatives natin. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, we will defer to our capital, di ba? kung ano po yung instructions ng Department of Foreign Affairs to hold accountable kung sino man po yung mga dapat na managot doon sa nak- nakaraan. Eh, we, of course, have respect for the rule of law and strengthening of the administrative justice system ng Department of Foreign Affairs at lahat ng mga partner agencies natin na kasama ngayon at, at patuloy na tumutulong sa atin para talagang uh, mapigilan yung ganitong klaseng krimen na lumaganap, matulungan ng mga kabataan natin at syempre mabigyan sila ng pagkakataon ng bagong buhay pag uwi sa Pilipinas. Kaya mm-hmm. thank you kay uh, Alias Alice. So I hope to see you. Sana po magtuloy-tuloy po yung inyong uh, programang pangkabuhayan. At si uh, Marites, salamat din. Um, wag po ninyong uh, kalimutan yung mga karanasan ninyo sa Syria. At sana po ay pati sa pag-uwi ng mga nasa Adra Prison hanggang ngayon at ng iba nating mga kababayan sa shelter, ay matulungan din po natin silang magkaroon ng tunay na hustisya at pagkakataon na magbagong buhay pagbalik po nila sa Pilipinas. Narito po kami sa Philippine Embassy at sa Department of Foreign Affairs na handang tumulong po sa lahat ng mga gustong humingi ng tulong sa abot po ng aming mga kayayanan. So, Marami salamat. Marami salamat, Charge Affairs Vida. Uh, bago tayo tumuloy sa mga tanong tungkol sa mga bata na binanggit nyo na nga, just uh, a quick clarification no, for the record. Pinilit nga ba ng DFA si Elias Alice na sabihin na ayaw na niya magparipatriate? Just for the record, Charge Affairs. Opo. Uh, for the record, based on the letter po na nakuha ko na to, I think there is a miscommunication based on the recruitment agency. Kasi po, kung naalala po ni Alias Alice, di ba, matagal na rin po niya nakita na yung agency po niya ay um, hindi nagsasabi ng katotohanan. Kaya we had to ask for the help of our superman, si Consul General Wasim Nana. Dahil mm-hmm. kung nahirapan tayong mag, di ba, nahirapan tayong makipag-negotiate sa recruitment agency, kaya kailangan tinaas na natin sa uh, higher level officials, nakailang sulat din tayo sa Ministry of Foreign Affairs, para iwas to yung mali na sinasabi ng recruitment agency na kesyo si alias Alice daw ay masaya sa kanyang employer, na mataas daw ang sahod niya, mabuti daw ang kalagayan niya. So, uh, yun po ay, nung nag-assume na po ako, sumulat po tayo sa ministry para itama, sabihin na hindi po totoo yung mga laman ng sulat na yon na sinabi ng uh, recruitment agency. Kaya sa part ng DFA, OMWA, nakita rin po nila yung efforts din po ng embassy at yung efforts din po ni Consul General Nana para matulungan po si alias Alice kahit na kasinungalingan yung sinabi ng recruitment agency po. Okay, salamat, Charged Affairs. Well, um... Alam ko po mula kay Ms. Alice na kumpleto yung mga dokumento niya. So uh, pag-aaralan din po namin kung may miscommunication nga at kung mayroon, uh, paano ito malilinawan kung may miscommunication nga. Salamat, Charger Defense. And lastly, bago nga tayo magpatuloy sa mga tanong tungkol sa trafficking ng mga bata, sana po matulungan din natin yung isa pang kababayan, kabaro natin na nasa bilangguan sa Syria uh, tulad ng uh, binanggit ni uh, Miss Alice kanina tulad ng nagawang pagtulong uh, ng embassy kay Miss Marites. 
Tapos, uh, Charge d'Affaires, uh, Vida, sa video po ni Len Len naman na pinakinggan na natin kanina, binanggit po niya na siya ay verbally sexually harassed ng isang empleyado ng embassy, isang nagngangalang June Carillo. Mari po bang malaman yung status ng empleyadong ito? Regarding po Mr. Carillo, so um, from my knowledge po sa embassy, he's part of the recallies na in order po ni Secretary of Foreign Affairs, kung maalala niyo po na nag-issue po siya ng recall order para sa kanila. Pero as to the status of the cases po, I would to the DFA's um, Office of Treaties and Legal Affairs and the Undersecretary for Administration kung ano man po yung mga disciplinary measures. But rest assured po na um, yung mga ganitong reports po ay pinag-aaralan po natin ng gusto at uh, part po ng pagpapalakas natin ng administrative justice system ng DFA ay uh, bigyan po natin ng due process ang bawat panig para maintindihan po natin yung mga detalye ng bawat kaso po. Salamat, Charge Aid Affairs. Yes, I will also quickly ask that of DFA. At sana po, um, uh, tinitake cognizance of ng ating embahada sa Damascus at pati ng buong DFA, yung specific complaints about verbal sexual harassment. Dahil, or or could, could you tell the committee, Charge Aid Affairs, if yung dahilan or isang dahilan ng pag-recall kay Mr. Carillo ay yung ganitong uh, pagtatrato niya kay Elias Lenlen? Mm -hmm. um, as to the reason for the recall, I believe it's the Secretary of Foreign Affairs who can best answer that. But to address these measures, we instituted a child protection policy po sa okay. Philippine Embassy. And we're also very serious about our sexual anti-sexual harassment program. So meron po tayong CODI within the Department of Foreign Affairs. And um, very active po talaga yung prosecution natin ng mga code cases natin ng sexual harassment. At um, bahagi din po nito yung pagpapalakas din ng ating gender sensitivity trainings and gender development na perspective sa ginagawa natin. It's really not tolerated in the DFA. Maraming salamat para dyan, uh, Charged Affairs. Uh, actually, na-anticipate nyo yung huling tanong ko sa inyo because after uh, acknowledging na yung tatlong individual na napanood at narinig natin kanina, yung mga bata na pumasok sa Syria bilang minors, uh, umalis sa Syria noong 2020, uh, yun ay bago nung panahon nyo, no? before your, uh, your watch there at the embassy. Uh, at saka, again, before, before your term, yung uh, sinabi nga ni uh, Elias Len Len na uh, pinilit siya or pinagawa sa kanya i-recant yung statement niya. I, I was really going to ask you kung anong measures yung ina-undertake para protektahan yung mga minors na uh, nata-traffic. Meron ba kayong uh, iba pang specific program para doon? So hindi lang anti-trafficking in general, itself already very challenging, pero anti-trafficking particularly para sa minors. Um, opo, maganda po na natanong nyo yun kasi maliban po sa ating anti-trafficking policy, may child protection policy din po, po tayo na may commitment po yung lahat ng mga embassy officials natin na i-report din po yung mga possible violations ng child protection standards natin na nanggaling din naman po sa DSWD at sa IACAT. At um, paglilinaw din po dun sa issue na yun kasi uh, para lang maklear yung misconception. So yung nanay-nanayan po na nire-refer um, based mm -hmm. on our interpretation din, nag-memo din tayo para magpa-explain dun sa house mother at sa ibang mga individual po nung dahil sa pangyayari na dun. Uh, isang himalay na award po yung, yung tinutukoy na yun na gumawa nung kasulatan na yun. Kasi uh, nung inaral din po natin yung mga dokumento ng house mother, bali may house mother po tayo, may assistant house okay. mother, nakar naman po natin yung parang kabauan ng um, picture kung ano po yung nangyari noon. Uh, mm -hmm. So, uh, tama po kayo na dapat po talaga pag-aralan ng mabuti ang bawat panig at uh, mailinaw po talaga na para sa atin, napakahalaga po na ang karapatan ng mga bata ay pahalagahan natin sa Pilipinas man o sa bawat pasuguan sa iba't ibang bansa. Salamat, Charged Affairs Vida. At bago ko iwan yung mga tanong sa inyo, again, just for the record, kanina nga nung uh, pinag-uusapan nyo yung uh, kaso ni Ms. Marites, nabanggit nyo nga na may three men. So, of course, um, uh, dinig ng komite yung sinabi nyo nire-respeto natin ang 
uh, legal system ng bawat bansa. At the same time, hindi po nalilimutan ng komite yung uh, sinabi ni uh, Ms. Marites o yung salaysay tungkol sa kaso ni Ms. Marites na actually injustice yung pagkabilanggot uh, niya in the first place dahil sa kanyang ang salaysay wala po siyang krimeng iginawa sa kanyang dating employer, humingi lang talaga ng pahintulot makauwi dahil naman namatay yung uh, kaniyang asawa. And in fact, ang nakagawa or gumawa ng krimen sa kanya ay yung kanyang dating employer. So, uh, just for the record. At muli maraming salamat, uh, Sharjay Daffairs Vida, sa inyong uh, pagsubaybay at pakikilahok uh, dito sa aming mga pagdinig at yung konkretong aksyon nyo. Uh, in partnership sa komite at yung ibang at yung mga um, executive agencies dito alang-alang sa ating mga kababayan, kabaro and moving forward uh, sa ating ding mga bata. Um, I'd like to move now to the DFA, tabanggit din ni Sharjay Daffairs um, Vida. Pero mabalikan natin yung uh, tunong dun sa um, verbal sexual harassment ni Mr. Carillo Laban uh, sa batang si Elias Lenlen. Uh, but uh, um, uh, uh, E.D. Arribas, let's take a few steps uh, more, no, backwards. Mukhang sa issue nito, yung uh, masasabi nating original sin ay dun sa passport issuing authority or isa sa original sin, no? Um, yes, uh, sir. I think sa kaso po nung mga uh, 2008 victim survivor, sila ay biktima ng baklas passport. So sa research po namin, itong baklas passport uh, scheme, karaniwan siya no, sa trafficking operations. Aware na po ba officially ang DFA dito? At ano po yung mga hakbang na ginawa nyo na or ginagawa nyo na uh, laban, po, uh, laban po dito? Okay. Yung and change ho tayo ng technology when it comes to the passport processing po. Tama po. Mhm. Mm po noon yung green po po yung passport. Do nga ho yung very pro right. uh, ano sa mga baklas. Mm -hmm. So po tayo sa nag-shift ho tayo sa electronic passport. Mm -hmm. pa ang uh, ang biometrics mismo ng aplikante ang siyang talagang lalabas sa passport. Mm -hmm. Pero I'm sure meron lang po akong gustong i, i sabihin po sa committee na kami din po sa DFA, particularly ho yung ating uh, consular office sa Cotabato at sa iba ho natin mm -hmm. mga nakaka-experience ho kami ng problema when it comes to the submission of the birth certificate. Mm -hmm. Tutuusin niyo po, ang trafficking po, nagsisimula ho talaga, hindi naman po yan nagsisimula lang yan sa immigration. Hindi lang mm -hmm. naman din nagsisimula yan sa passport. Nagsisimula ho yan doon sa mga munisipyo kung saan ho nauuso yung late registration of birth. Mm -hmm. May mga marami hong pagkakataon na yung mga ginagawa ho nila kahit na assuming ho, assuming na yung pinanganak ng bata nagkaroon man ng birth certificate mm -hmm. ang ginagawa, base ho ito sa mga reports na natatanggap namin ang ginagawa ho ng mga illegal recruiters pumupunta ho sila sa munisipyo at magpapalate registration nang kanilang sila na. Mm. So anong nangyayari po? Idi Ariba, okay, you're back. Sige po. Opo, doon ho nila nilalagay yung ibang pangalan, doon ho nila nilalagay, doon ho nila pinapalitan yung birth date. Mhm. Mm Pag ganoon na ho ang lumalabas at inaccept ho yan ng municipal civil registry, ayun ho ay papasok na sa Philippine Statistics Authority na records. Mm -hmm. Ayun po ay na-produce na with the security paper, ayun na po ang magiging basihan po ng DFA consular offices na mag-issue po ng passport. Mm -hmm. So, siguro ma-recommend po sa committee na ito para po ma-prevent natin yung child trafficking. Siguro yes. po engage po natin yung mga local municipalities po natin and maybe with DILG para po ma-empower natin yung ating mga munisipyo, mga local municipalities and cities para po masugpo nila yung mga nagpapalate registration po kasi base ho sa aming experience ito ang nang, kumbaga ito na ho yung panimula ng kanilang uh, illegal recruitment program Madam Chair. Salamat Idi Aribas no? uh, nagsimula na kayong magbigay ng mga mungkahi. I-test po natin yung sitwasyong ito dito sa konkretong 
kaso ni uh, Elias Lenlen. So I understand na yung mga unang biometric passports ni release po ninyo 2009. So si Lenlen ay biometric passport na. At ayon sa testimonya po niya, pumunta siya sa binanggit niyo rin DFA Cotabato. So maari ko po ba kayong tanungin uh, ED Aribas, paano nangyayari na ito na ba 'yon? Uh, dahil yung mga illegal recruiters na mismo naglilate reg. Kasi nangyayari na yung pangalan sa birth certificate, yun din sa passport, pero pag na-generate, uh, hindi, pag na-generate yung passport, iba nang uh, pangalan uh, uh, ang nakalagay. And para lang, ano, no, um, matulungan nyo po kami maintindihan yung sitwasyon din ng DFA Cotabato, in particular ED Arribas, actually po nababalitaan nga namin na uh, may mga... Uh, tinututukan ng barel yung ilang DFA para ilabas yung passports tinututukan po ng mga recruiters so paano po ba nating um, magagawang mas epektibo yung biometric passport system laban sa ganitong mga practices ng late reg pati itong pagtutok ng barel sa ating mga DFA personnel Idi Arribas Uh, naririnig ko na po ako? Yes, naririnig ko na po kayo ulit. Sorry po. Yan It's po, okay, uh, sir. Uh, yan na po ang mga naging reports po namin, yung ini-investigate mm -hmm. way back in 2018 po. Kasi at that time, hindi lang nga po sa Syria na nagkaroon ng kaso, kundi rin po sa Saudi Arabia na biglang tumaas Totoo po. na trafficking cases po doon involving mm -hmm. So kami po na, na kanina po nasabi ko di Commissioner Morente na Pumunta nga ho kami sa opisina nila. Ako nga ho yung kasama ni Undersecretary Sara Lu Ariola para ho i-address yung issue na yun. Um, kung, kung kami po ang tatalingin, kung ano ho yung mga mahakbang na pwede namin gawin, of course, mm -hmm. freelance na rin din po uh, on the part of our passport processors po to make sure na yung mga sinasabit sa kanila na mga documents ay valid. Yes. Pero, pero then again po, uh, Madam Chair, We can only do so much po. I'm not saying that uh, we we will not be doing our part po uh, to make sure that uh, we will be we will not be processing passports for minors. But at this mm -hmm. point, we really need to get the involvement of the local government units po. Because mm -hmm. operations po ng ano, operations po ng DFA, eh, hindi lang naman po dito yan sa Metro Manila, kundi alam niyo naman na po, kalat na po yan sa ating mga probinsya mm -hmm. para po malapit po ba sa DFA ng DFA po sa kanila. Pero na mas nangangailangan din ho, like kung kung yung mga yung kung yung may mga ganyan ho reports na tinututukan ho ng mga sindikato yung aming mga tao. Opo. Siguro po uh, mas magdadang makakapagbigay ho talaga ng security sa amin. Mm -hmm. uh, po sa tao na yung mga local government units na po. So okay. um, kaya nga po siguro ang aking mong kahi ho in in uh, in cases of uh, prevention of uh, trafficking of minors talaga mm -hmm. siguro po natin yung involvement po ng local government units and maybe with DILJ naman, uh, DILJ na rin po. One, yes. kanina po, po ni, ni Attorney Vida, one government approach, one society approach. Mm -hmm. So, mas mainan din po na uh, involved din natin ibang government agencies. And then, isa po, Madam Chair, sorry if I take you too much time. Pero, no, no, not at all. Uh, you're helping us. You're helping the committee, ED. Of course, alam na po natin na ang problema po ng mga, ng mga trafficking ay poverty po. Kaya yes. Po, if you notice po, yung ating mga kaso ay usually galing sa mga rural areas where, where poverty is really prevalent. Meron naman po tayo siguro mga anti-poverty commission po tayo. Meron po tayong mm -hmm. commission on women na siguro po, yung kanila po mga services, yung kanilang mga yung kanila mga advocacies, kung pwedeng ibaba na din ho nila sa grassroots level. Mm. Kasi ho doon ho talaga yung source ng ano eh, nandoon ang source ng problema. Ang recruitment po ay nangyayari sa mga ano sa mga probinsya, sa mga barrio. So, hindi lang ho, hindi lang ho ito problema ng national gov ng, ng national government agencies, problema rin ho to dapat ng mga local government agencies, mga local government units mga chair. Mm -hmm. Salamat um uh ED Arribas. I really appreciate uh that input of yours tulad nung kay 
uh, iyakat prosecutor Ben Doval kanina, no? going to the root causes. And certainly, yun yung uh, dapat gawin kung talagang whole of government, whole of nation approach tayo. Very, very well noted always. And at the same time, di ba, yung kasabihan ng isang dating Pangulo natin na he or she who has less in life should have more in law. So kahit yung mga immediate na uh, social protections natin, law enforcement natin, delivery of justice natin, sa mga uh, uh, sinasamantalahan dahil nga kung mahirap or kung late reg ng birth certificate, or sinasamantala yung uh, cultural, religious practice na kanilang karapatan para sila ay biktimahin. So we we do those strategic and also those urgent and immediate interventions uh, ng sabay. One follow-up question, Edi Aribas. In fact po, banggit ng mga NGOs on the ground na sila rin uh, nagmomonitor na yun na nga, um, May mga nata-traffic na babae at bata, hindi lang sa Syria, pati nga sa uh, Saudi Arabia. Uh, banggit po nila na may pila sa DFA, uh, including DFA Cotabato, na mukhang bata talaga. So, posible pa rin po ba na may DFA corrupt officials on the ground dun sa mga area na ayan, nakapila yung mga bata bound for travel kuno but actually trafficking abroad posible po ba yon Idi Aribas naka po kayo Yes sir Sorry po ulit It's okay Dito po sasabihin na imposible Okay So kung posible meron, Kung meron hong, kung meron hong mga ganyang allegation ay talaga hong uh, siniseryoso ho namin na talagang i-investigahin po namin Nakikita right. siguro sa mga members po ng ating civil society kung meron po silang na-receive o na ganyang report, sabihin po sa amin sa DFA. At talaga si Sirisoyin ho namin yan. Kasi ayaw naman ho na. Napaka-ironic naman ho, tinutulungan ho natin yung ating mga kababayan, lalo na yung mga, yung mga natatrapik tapos sa loob ho na hanay namin, meron po mga ganyan. So, exactly. kita po sa amin na kung meron mga da- ganyan dapat problema, uh, may mga problema na dapat uh, tugunan, sabihin lang po. At uh, rest assured, uh, action naman po namin yan. Salamat, uh, Edi Aribas. I take that as a commitment na iimbestigahan nyo na nga kung may mga uh, reklamo na formal, official na ibibigay sa inyo. Salamat po uh, uh, para doon. Um, yes, I'd like to turn now to uh, NBI, Attorney Donggalio. Naku, maraming salamat na tulad ni Sharje Dafir Vida kanina, kahit tanghali na ay nandito pa rin po kayo kasama namin. And you have really been uh, one of the faithful, um, I must say, uh, make of record, faithful partners of the committee dito sa aming mga pagdinig. Mula pa nung nakaraang taon, higit isang taon na Pebrero pa nung 2020, nung simulan po itong mga pagdinig namin tungkol sa uh, pastillas no na umabot na nga rito ngayon sa Maraming salamat po Madam Chair. Yes, salamat sa inyo attorney. So attorney uh, Dogali without preempting anything, uh pwede po ba kami makatanggap ng update uh sa progress ng inyong investigasyon so far? Yes ma'am, uh, una po uh, magandang tanghali po Madam Chair at kay Honorable Senator uh Joel Senator Joel Villanueva at kay Madam Senator Amy Marcos at sa other resource speakers. Ano. Uh, sa, ganang, sa, sa ganang pong sa NBI sa amin, kami po ay tuloy-tuloy na nag-iimbestiga. Uh, Nagipag-ugnayan na po kami sa office ng ating uh, kagalang-galang na Commissioner, Morente, Commissioner Morente ng Immigration at sa ibang official ng Immigration para makakuha po tayo ng mga documents. Ano. Uh, kailangan para mapalakas natin yung ipapile natin mga kaso. Actually po ma'am, uh, napakalaking tulong yung pagbubunyag, matapang na pagbubunyag na ginawa nitong una nating yung na-rescue. Ano? Uh, nakuha na po natin yung statements yun. Uh, nakuha na po natin yung mga names ng immigration officers involved ng paalis sa daw sa immigration. At amin pong kinu-cross-check ano, kung sino... Kasi po, uh, narinig naman po natin yung mga uh, paliwanag ng ating whistleblower, specifically po si Alison, na karamihan po sa mga frontliners, sabi nila na pre-pressure din ng mga superior nila. 
So atin pong ginagawa ngayon, nagcross check po tayo kung during the time na nag-stamp sila nung 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 mga travel documents, sino yung supervisor nila? Sino mm-hmm. yung kasama nila sa sa counter para ma-check din natin kung ito po ba ay ito ba ang nag-pressure sa kanila o nag-utos sa kanila na na tatakan niyan kahit labag sa loob nila, no? So gusto gusto po nating maano yan, matiyak. Kasi ang ang meron po kami na sabi na Uh, during the past investigation, yung first at second batch pastillas, na sinasabi nila na hindi po nila alam na may problema pala ito. Ang sinasabi, inutusan sila ng supervisor nila. Sinasabi po nila, so we are very careful na uh, alamin kung sino ba yung nasa behind dito mga batang to. Kasi po ma'am, uh, gusto, ko po, gusto po namin kayo inform sa NBI na itong mga karamihan sa nakakasuhan natin, yung mga, mga bata, anong mga bagong immigration officers. Yung foot soldiers. Yung foot soldiers. Yung mga yung mga foot soldiers na sinasabi. So, yes, ma'am. So, hmm. in cross check po namin yan at kami naman po ay uh, in-encourage namin itong mga nabanggit ng mga pangalan na nagtatak nga na you come forward and inform yes. the NBI, inform us kung sino ba talaga nag-utos. Huwag po kayo matakot. Kasi po, hmm. sa totoo lang, kayo ang makakasuhan at tandaan ninyo human trafficking itong kinakaharap ninyong kaso. Wala Actually, attorney, yes. at j- nagjo-join ang komite sa panawagan ng NBI na mag-come forward yung gusto pang tumulong sa investigasyon at para hindi na ma- mahuli pa nung 20-year period of proscription para sa trafficking. Napakaseryosong krimen. Tama po yun, ma'am. At kami po ay nagpapasalamat kay Commissioner Morente sa kanilang Uh, pakikipag-ugnayan at pagtulong sa amin na ibigay kayo yung mga lahat ng detalye, dokumento, at nagkapasalamat po kami. So, Attorney, ipa-flash ko po ngayon yung mga pangalan na iyon. No? Sila po, itong mga pangalan yung na-identify nung nakaraang hearing sa mga Viber screenshot ni na Alex at sa iba pang ebidensya. At uh, pakitukoy po sa komite kung ano na po ang status ng investigation sa kanila. Ito po. Sige po, attorney. Hindi ko na po isa-isahin, ano? Uh, yung iba po dyan, uh, yung... Gusto niyo po ba mga isa-isahin ko o banggitin ko na lang in, in passing, ano? Uh, pwedeng pwedeng uh, isa-isahin po kung may notable na update sa investigasyon nyo sa taong iyon. or kung cluster then uh, in passing pero as uh, as detailed as as you can get for the hearing ma appreciate po ng committee attorney yes yes sir honor uh, ito may may mga nakikita po ako dito kagaya yung mga familiar ng names na na file na po natin nung yes. case during the first and second batch nung pastillas ma'am ano oh, uh, they are i heard suspended na po sila meron mm-hmm. man po nag crop up ng mga bagong names dito nang po actually natin yung nabanggit isa actually ilang po rito yung nagtatak nung first week uh, na travel documents nung first, first witness natin na na-rescue so Apo. yun nga po ma'am uh, yun si yun update ma'am so pinapalakas na po natin yung mga ebidensya at sooner or later makakapag-file na po tayo ng case ma'am yung... alright attorney so kasi ang uh, finla flash po naming screenshot or yung matrix po ay yung mga pangalan sa kaliwa ay galing sa viber screenshot at yung mga pangalan mas kumpletong pangalan sa kanan ay galing sa listahan na kinasuhan na nga ng inyong bureau tama po ng NBI yes ma'am tama ng po NBI. that's right attorney so ano pa po yung mga bottlenecks sa inyong investigasyon halimbawa uh, kung hindi pa man Uh, napa napaabswelto na sa investigasyon nyo. Bakit yung sa kanang listahan may mga blanko pa uh, at, at, at uh, sa update sa kanila? Since nandito rin, na rin naman po attorney lahat ng mga relevant agencies dito po sa ating pagdinig, baka kung may mga bottlenecks ay dito nyo po i-share para ma-facilitate na rin yung pag loosen up ng mga bottlenecks na iyon, ma-facilitate yung coordination sa kailangan makapag-coordinate pa kayo sa kanila. Thank you po, Madam Chair. No? Ang mga challenges po natin dito sa during our, our investigations, ano, 
Ah, mm-hmm. uh, minsan po uh, we are especially during this time na may pandemic po tayo. Mm-hmm. So, nahirapan po kami sa pag-collect ng mga pieces of evidence kagaya ng mga documents, travel documents. Paminsan po, yun ang bat, yun ang challenges natin. Naintindihan na naman po natin yung mga ahensya ng gobyerno kasi for the past few months talaga naka-skeletal po. Uh, minsan talaga mahirap po. May mga nagpa-positive sa iba-ibang offices sa COVID infection. Pero uh, during the conduct of this hearing, ma'am, napansin ko, especially itong hearing po natin, ano, uh, naging mas cooperative na po yung mga ahensya at kung meron namang mga personal na nakapasok, uh, they're more cooperative now na tuloy-tuloy po yung conduct ninyo ng investigasyon sa sina- Senado. So, Mabuti po, naman po. Masasabi ko na Is masasabi ko po ma'am na lahat na, naman po ng government offices or agency na atin pong sinusulatan, mabilis naman po ang turnover ng mga documents so far ngayon. Kaya mas mabilis po tayo mag-investiga. Mabuti po kasi tama naman kung, kung magkaroon man ng infection sa isang opisina, hindi naman lahat. no Kaya nga may skeletal workforce pa. At kung so para sa collation, kung delivery ng mga kinakailangang documents ng NBI, eh meron namang mga delivery services. Ano po? At uh, kahit may pandemya kasi, namumroblema pa rin yung ating mga kababayan ng data traffic. So sobrang essential yung timely action lalo na ng NBI, so inaasahan po talaga natin yung timely coordination sa inyo kahit pa pandemya nung iba pang mga ahensya. So salamat po para dyan, attorney. And then particular follow up po, no? mayroon pong minention si Omaima kanina po sa kanyang salaysay. Sabi ni Omaima na bahay sa tagig kung saan nandun yung mga babae, pati batang babae, bago sila ipadala sa ibang bansa, sabi nga niya marami dun sa kanila ay minors, Nare-read niyo po ba yung mga ganito at nag-e-exist pa po ba yung ganitong mga bahay? May, may sinabi kasi siyang ni-read sila ng pulis. So hindi ko alam kung PNP ba yon or NBI yon no? Pero nare-read niyo po ba yon at meron pa rin bang ganyan mga kumbaga holding areas? Uh, tama po yan ma'am. No? Napagandang tanong po. Uh, for the past few years, marami na po tayong nare-read na mga bahay. Yun nga, sa place na nabanggit ninyo, na may mga tinatagong mga minority dad for purposely to be traffic. May mga rage, may mga rage po tayong conducted before yung amin pong uh, anti-human trafficking division under kay Attorney Janet Francisco. Yes. Napakasipag po nila mga kami Na-assign din po ako doon. Okay. Meron po tayo mga rage. Okay. Pero napan, napansin ko po ma'am na um, pag na-raid, magpapalamig lang. Then after some time, nandyan na naman. Ano? So kami po ay hindi titigil na i-monitor ito. Actually, ito nga pong nabanggit ninyo. Ngayon na na-mention yan, meron na po ako mga, mga operatiba na pinacheck ko kagad yung mga... Uh, may mga asit naman tayo na talagang itinuturo yan. Ano. So, tuloy-tuloy po tayo sa NBI sa pag re Sa direktiba po ng ating officer in charge, ang human trafficking ay itinuturing natin isa sa dapat tutukan. Ano. Kasi talagang malaki ang damage dito sa ating mga kababain at kabataan. So, kikukonfirm ko po ma'am na meron kami ng mga na-raid before na mga minor talaga na rescue natin at for, for some time pag na-raid, humihinto sila then after some time, meron na naman. Nag-iiba lang ng place pero kami po ay nakahandang tumugon dyan at this moment ma'am, nagpatakbo na po ako ng mga tao ko para i-verify ang address kung ano man yan. Maraming salamat uh, attorney. Opo, uh, actually nitong nakaraang taon may mga iba pa tayong halimbawa naririnig na mariraid, mag papalamig lang and then magsisimula ulit. So siguro hangga't hindi natugunan talaga yung mga ugat ng problema at hindi talaga nasingil yung accountability at nabigyan ng hustisya yung victim survivors, ganun yung magiging problema natin. Pero kaya inaasahan po ng komite, ng mga Pilipino, yung patuloy na pagkilos ng mga uh, bureau katulad ng NBI. So maraming salamat po para doon. Uh, salamat. salamat sir. Turning ngayon sa DSWD, uh, Kay Ms. Uh, Gabriela Fernandez. Madam uh, Chair? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, Saint Joel, kayo ba yan? So, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, Saint Joel, you have so, the floor. So, so, sorry, Madam Chair. I know that not uh, this is not in line with, with, with your uh, uh, questions being raised, but I, I need to leave in a while uh, for uh, another uh, hearing, Madam Chair. But can I just uh, ask for documents na lang, Madam Chair, if, if I may, uh, Madam Chair? 
Please do, send Joel. You have the floor. Madam Chair, tatlo lang po kasi uh, I remember last hearing uh, si uh, Yusek Ariola stated that they uh, stopped the practice of buying out contracts of household service workers and instead uh, filed uh, court, ca court cases against uh, employers. Uh, I, I just wanted to to, to ask sana uh, for, for, for documents na lang po yung number of pending cases filed against Syrian and UAE employers since 2019, including their status. That's uh, my first request. And then my second request would be uh, um, I was looking at the, and I was with, with Mam Tuts Ople and, and some other uh, uh, OFW uh, groups, organizations with the importance of uh, uh, promoting ethical recruitment. And I just Recall, dito po sa POEA, uh, sa 2016 POEA rules, part 9, section 235, it provides that the administration shall continue to recognize um, exemplary performance of licensed recruitment agencies and develop an incentive scheme to reward those that practice ethical recruitment standards, including the development of a white list of agencies. Sana po makahingi din tayo ng... Uh, uh, kopya o listahan ng efforts ng POEA in promoting ethical standards and the number of agencies incentivized and whitelisted for maintaining uh, those standards. Hingi lang din po ako. And last but not the least, Madam Chair, and I'm, again, I'm sorry and I apologize that I have to leave in a while. Um, sa dole po, kasi I, I was looking at the, uh, the data submitted to us by dole sa polo yung Middle East po, nagkaroon ng spike in contract substitution. When you talk about contract substitution, no? in the years 2016 to 2019, 2016, 25, 27, 2017, 17, 2018, 247. Pagdating ng 2019, 706. So, patas ng patas. No? So, ang hingin ko lang po sana sa ating mga kasamahan sa DOLE, yung status of the 706 contract substitution cases in 2019. Uh, kasama din po ba dyan yung sa UAE na binabanggit na nagpunta sa Syria, etc. As well as the number of recruitment agencies penalized with regard to these cases. So yun lang, Madam Chair. Again, maraming salamat and uh, mabuhay po kayo. Mabuhay San Joel at maraming salamat. So, uh, dear colleagues, please take note. The committee requests those documents, yung documents ng uh, number of cases at saka status, cases filed in relation to uh, trafficking of persons to Syria and other identified countries. Pangalawa, yung uh, update on the POEA whitelist in connection sa uh, yung uh, ethical uh, recruitment at pati yung uh, incentive schemes uh, beginning the year 2016. And last but not the least sa DOLE, yung uh, status ng 700 uh, cases, uh, sorry, 706 ng contract substitution ng 2016, opo, uh, tsaka yung number of recruitment agencies. Yes. Thank you. Chinarge in relation to this. Thank you also, uh, Sen Joel. Much, At uh, much, good luck yeah. din po sa susunod na hearing ninyo. Salamat Thank po. you. Salamat. All right. So, um, opo, sa DSWD, opo, uh, Ms. Gabriela Fernandez, opo, ma'am, uh, muli, uh, tul tulad po kina uh, Attorney Donggayo at Charze Dafir Vida, salamat po na tanghali na halos hapon na andito pa rin kayo sa atin. Uh, and I would like to thank the department, uh, Ms. Gabriela, para sa tulong, no, yung assistance na in-extend ninyo sa mga uh, formerly trafficked women na nandito na sa atin. So halimbawa po oh. si Elias Lenmen, uh, kinukumpirma po ninyo na Dumaan po sa shelter ninyo, hindi po ba, Ms. Gabriela? Um, yes, madam. Sige po. Hello, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. With me today is Director Naviamos. 
Um, oh yes, of course. <laughs> Hello, ma. Hello, <laughs> Director Wilma. Yes, ma'am. Ang aming pinamahal na suki. Good afternoon, ma'am, Director. And Madam Chair, uh, we confirmed that Len Len was uh, indeed sheltered with us last year. And in September 2020, she was repatriated, I mean, reintegrated to her community in Sharif Agawak. Okay. Ah, okay. Sa Sharif Agawak mismo. All right. Salamat, ah, uh, Miss Gabriela. Tapos Miss Gabriela and the uh, Director Wilma, bati po sa naging karanasan nyo sa mga minors na trafficking victims, would you say na phenomenon na ito? Uh, sa Syria lang po ba? Sa Saudi Arabia lang po ba? Gaya ng sinasabi ng aming mga partner NGOs o sa iba pang o maaring marami pang mga bansa? Itong trafficking of minors. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Please. Yes, po. Uh, karamihan po, uh, Madam Chair, it's in the Middle East. Uh, okay. So, uh, yan po yung isa sa mga tinututukan ng ating pamahalaan uh, para sa ating uh, mga OFWs. No po, Director Wilma. Baka, baka din po pwede ako maka-request sa inyo ngayong hearing. Uh, pwede nyo po bang bigyan ng assistance? Pati itong tatlong witnesses natin, si Elias Len Len na tinutulungan nyo na, plus si uh, Ms. Omaima at saka uh, Ms. Alea at kasama po sa uh, continuing assistance na iyon. Pwede po bang pati psychosocial uh, assistance para din, para pa rin Kina Ms. Alice at Ms. Marites na kasama po natin sa hearing na ito, Director Wilma. Yes po, uh, uh, pero may update po si Gav, pero Madam Sige, please. with your permission, we prepared a, a presentation to update you on the status of our interventions. Director Wilma, kung okay lang po sa inyo, isubmit nyo na lang po sa komite. Just in the interest of time po, dahil meron pagkatapos po ninyo ay may dalawa or tatlo pa tayong resource persons na I would like to uh, hear on record. Uh, yes, pero salamat po. And uh, uh, the committee really appreciates yung assistance nyo sa ating mga women and children, uh, victim survivors. Salimbawa po, si Aleya, uh, mukhang wala pa pong Uh, natatanggap na assistance at mahirap din po kasi yata siyang makontak sa kanyang kinaroroonan but uh, the committee would like to request the assistance of the SWD na marating siya uh, pati ng assistance uh, Sige po Madam Chair uh, tinitake note po namin pero may update po si Gabe kasi Apo. siya yung nakatutok po doon pero po sa katanungan kanina na kung po pwede yung mga Uh, witnesses po ay mabigyan din ng intervention. Meron po tayo, nakapaloob po yan, Madam Chair, sa atin pong RRPTP uh, as an intervention uh, for OFWs. Gap. Okay. Maraming salamat, Director Wilma. So para yun din kina Ms. Alice at Ms. Marites. Okay. So Ms. Yes, Gab, Mr. Uh, yes po. Rest assured po na we are coordinating everything to our field offices para po mabigyan okay, sila ng services. Actually, all the 23 victim survivors that you referred po, ni uh -huh. Drew Attorney Jay was already endorsed po to our field offices as well as dun sa 26 repatriated victim survivors po na dumating between February to April 2021. They are, and I am really closely monitoring all of these cases. Nakatutok po mo siya doon. Siya lang yung dedicated. Kami salamat, Director Wilma. Opo, Attorney Jay is very happy to hear that also dito sa hearing. And masaya po kami, pati si Ms. Alea ay mararating nyo rin, mapaparatingan nyo rin ng assistance. Maraming salamat po muli, Director Wilma. At sigurado kong hindi po ito ang huli. Ang dami-dami po nating pinagtutulungan mga advocacies Uh, bukod po dito sa ating uh, investigasyon. Just Thank you po, Director. Just to assure, Madam Chair, yes, that Director there Wilma. are 49 repatriated okay, oh, 49. PIP victim survivors. Uh, uh, 26 has been through the uh, collaboration of IACAT. And that 23 that you have referred directly to us uh, has been assisted already. And that's included in our report, Madam Chair. All right, maraming salamat Director Wilma at muli maraming salamat sa iyakat.
no sa ganitong mga patuloy na koordinasyon para matulungan yung ating mga kababayan. Salamat po Director Wilma. Um I'd like to move to the Blas Ople uh, Foundation. Um Toots Miss Toots. Salamat Miss Toots. Hapon na at nandito ka pa rin, nandito pa rin ang foundation. And uh, yes. before anything else, pasasalamat po talaga sa tulong ninyo sa mga trafficked women na nandito, no? Sina Ms. Marites, Ms. Uh, Alice, at lalo na rin na uh, sa binigay ninyong livelihood assistance, no? Yung mga manok. Um uh Ms. Tusa, I just have to make a record. I really admire the work that the foundation does mula po sa pag-rescue na ating mga kababayan na nandoon pa sa mga foreign countries hanggang sa pagtulong sa reintegration ng mga kababayan natin na uh, nakabalik na. Sa inyong mahabang karanasan po ng pagtatrabaho sa mga isyong ito, would you say that there is really a systematic pattern? No? So hindi lang blips on the radar pa minsan-minsan, pero systematic pattern ng trafficking pati ng minors. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, I also admire your work. The, the work of this committee has been tremendous in pushing for reforms. Um, Ma'am, yung unang case po ng human trafficking na hawakan ko was in 2006. Syria tin po siya. Wala pa pong embassy noon. So nakakalungkot na mula noon hanggang ngayon, ito pa rin po yung pinag-uusapan natin. Um, yung sa minors po, you can ask POEA, you can ask OWA, and even our case handlers po. Yung... yung um, uh, recruitment ng minors, uh, both ng illegal recruiters at ng iilang uh, unethical na recruitment agencies. Um, it, it is a systemic problem po. Um, we handled a case, 14 years old, this was in 2018. Uh, Kaka-cancel lang po ng lisensya. It took against the license agency to, um, to result Ms. Toots, nawala kayo. Okay po, ano po I, I can hear you again. Opo. Okay. Yes po. So it resulted in the cancellation of the license of the recruitment agency. But it took one year. Yes. And yung bata po was really, um, she was sexually molested po oh in, in Saudi Arabia. So this is a very serious problem. And... Yes. um. Po, some specific recommendations um, yes, for the committee to consider. Number one po, sana i-consider po ng DFA, alisin na po yung consular office dun sa oh. hall sa Cotabaco ah. City. Kasi we observe, ako po personally, I observe, yung ayusan po, nasa coffee shop, uh, a few steps ah. away from the mall. Um mm -hmm. Nakikita po namin, um, nagsiseminar po kasi kami doon sa Bangsamoro mm -hmm. area, nakikita po namin na may mga transaksyon na patong-patong yung folders sa mga applications ng passports. Mm -hmm. So, I think po dapat may secured yung, yung location ng consular office. Saka appropriate, di po ba? Hindi intimidate mm -hmm. na. Opo. Uh, very open po kasi. So, um, and malalakas ang loob ng mga illegal recruiters. Mm. Um, pangalawa po, we, we, we had a case po, this case na sa Hong Kong ni-recruit yung domestic worker na traffic mm. to um, Russia. Pilipino wow. po ang nag-recruit and ginagamit po niya ang Facebook. Wow. Um, the case was dismissed po sa fiscal, um, sa fiscal pa lang. Kasi um, yung recruitment daw happened in another country. So we wow. are hoping na we can amend the um, yung ating anti-illegal recruitment yes. law um, to include extraterritoriality po. So basta Pilipino ang nag-illegally recruit sa kapwa Pilipino saan man sa mundo, um, yes. He or she can be penalized. And additionally, Miss um, Susan, dun sa proposed amendments namin sa Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act, sinasama po namin yung accountability ng mga social media platforms at saka mga financial intermediaries na nagiging daluya, nagfa-facilitate ng ganitong uh, classing trafficking. And 
uh, particular dun po sa mungkahin nyo, we adopted that amendment sa draft ng bill tungkol po sa extraterritoriality. Yes po. Kasi kung tutusin po ma'am, madaling madali kasing makonvict sa illegal recruitment kesa sa human trafficking. Kasi you have to prove the element of exploitation which mm. normally happens abroad na so mahirap mag-gather ng evidence. Um, mm. Yung pangatlo po, uh, totoo po yung sinabi ni St. Joel, yung integrated case management system. Mm. This was developed by the OPLE Center for IACAT in partnership with the Global Fund to End Modern Slavery, um, which is an international organization. Unfortunately, ma'am, yung funding po namin, uh, the project will end this June. So oh. we're hoping na ma masalupo through the budget para mm -hmm. matuloy pa rin po yung, um, yung proyekto na yun. Um, All right. I don't okay. know if you can hear me po. Yes, I can hear you, Ms. Uh, Toots. And makikipagtrabaho ang komite uh, kay San Joel uh, pagdating po sa budget deliberations. Ms. Toots, can you hear? Okay. Ms. Toots, can you hear? May isa pa sana akong tanong sa inyo. Ms. Toots? Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Okay. Isa pang tanong sana, Ms. Toots. Kasi yung kagawad po mismo sa barangay ni Ms. Omaima, sabi po nung kagawad na may mga recruiter na nagbabahay-bahay para mag-recruit. So, ano pa po kaya ang, di ba? Ano pa po yung kailangang intervention sa ground, no? Para matigil yung ganitong trafficking. Knock on your door nga po ngayon yung ano eh. Noon pa po yan, knock on your door talaga. Tinatanong, may passport ka ba? Oh, yes. wow. Yes. Uh -huh. May passport ba? Anak mo. Uh -huh. uh, kung walang passport, kami na bahala dyan. Meron wow. pong iba na nag-iiwan pa ng pera. O ito para sa pamilya mm -hmm. nyo. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Pag-alis, parang binibili na yung yung anak, ano, na... Yeah, and, and um... Yan. Inahirapan din po tayo kumuha ng cooperation dahil yung stigma, marami mm. po sa mga families ayaw na lang sabihin na, na nangyari yun sa mga anak nila, lalo na sa Mindanao, ma'am. So napakalaga mm -hmm. po yung role ng local governments okay. na dapat po sana sa barangay level, pag may nagre-recruit, um, mm -hmm. hindi pwedeng mag-recruit na, na walang permiso ng, ng municipality. Ano? Yung okay. POEA lang po ang pwedeng mag, magbigay ng, ng recruitment, um, special recruitment authority. Tapos mm -hmm. ma'am, funding po sana for yes. IACATS. Um, hindi po nababanggit, pero meron pong actually task force against the trafficking of OFWs mm -hmm. ang IACATS. Okay. Um, Interagency din po siya, pero this is part of our project then and our partnership with IACAT. Mm -hmm. So, um, pag natapos na po yung project namin with the Global Fund to End Modern Slavery, wal wala na po yatang funding. So, baka pwede okay. pong ma-institutionalize na siya and mabigyan ng funding, pati po yung integrated case management system. And yes. last na lang po, yeah. Opo. Sa US po kasi merong victims assistance law for mm -hmm. traffic victims. Ngayon po, San Miguel Corporation has been helping a lot and we're so grateful. Labing lima po, entrepreneurs na po sila, nagbebenta na po na mag oh. ticket. But okay. we're hoping po na other, go, uh, other private sector partners can also come in. So we're mm -hmm. hoping po na may victims assistance uh, law that would also mm -hmm. incentivize private sector participation in helping victims of human trafficking. Thank you po, ma'am. Uh, Marami so, salamat ma din. Uh, sobrang salamat din po, uh, Ms. Toot. So, pagtulungan po natin pagdating sa uh, budget uh, deliberations, yung tungkol sa ICMS, pati yung yakat anti-trafficking of OFWs, at kung That's meron right. pong draft or pwede nating i-workshop na draft, kaugnay ng Victims Assistance na Bill. So maraming salamat, Ms. Ma Ma yes, yes Ms. If, if okay lang din po, we, we are drafting now the Ethical Recruitment um, mm -hmm. Act, which mm -hmm. uh, I hope uh, ito na po yung sinabi namin kay St. Joel. It's not just the OPLE Center, it's other 
OFW groups din po and we hope you can also share that with your office ma'am. Sige po, aralin ko po yung bill through St. Joel. Salamat yes. for bringing it to uh, my attention. Maraming salamat, uh, Ms. Toots. And last but not the least, para makompleto yung ating pagdinig, I'd like to call on CATWAP and Center for Migrant uh, Advocacy. Uh, si Ms. Uh, Irene Abano sa CMA at sa um, uh, sorry and Miss Jean is nandito ba si Miss Jean Enriquez sa Katwa Irene magandang hapon at salamat kahit hapon na nandito ka pa rin uh, please uh, nakamute ka yata uh, Miss Irene so just to just to uh, complete no our hearing ano po yung mga na-identify niyo pang mga gaps sa tugo ng gobyerno sa problema ng trafficking of persons especially of women at saka of children sa karanasan po ng CMA uh, Maraming pong salamat sa pag-imbita sa Center for Migrant Advocacy kami po ay nakikipagtrabaho sa mga uh, OFW family circles sa mga komunidad at unang-una ang sinasabi po nila ay ta uh, talamak talaga ngayon ang illegal recruiters and perhaps traffickers sa so community level nagbabahay-bahay nga po saka yung namimigay daw ng flyers mga nakamotor naka wow. at hindi nila kilala ang mga taong to Uh, mm -hmm. Sa community level po, yung, uh, ang sinasabi nilang uh, problema ay kapag may nabibiktima ay ang kahandaan o kakayanan ng ating mga kababaihan na mag-file ng complaint o ng kaso. Kasi uh, hindi, lang, hindi lang po siya simpleng mag-file ka lang kasi nagkaroon ka ng problema. Marami pong aspeto yan. Paano yung kanilang pamilya? Uh, mm. Kasi usapin po yan ng livelihood. Kasi di ba kaya nga sila nag-abroad para kumita tapos nagka-problema, napilitang bumalik. So syempre, ang primary concern nila, paano uh, nila mapupunuan yung remittance na hindi na nila pwede ipadala. Pangalawa, yun pong mga nakaka- uh, uh, encounter ng gender-based violence, halimbawa po harassment, verbal or physical or sexual, ay siyempre uh, nakakatuwa na marinig na itong particular dito sa mga uh, na, na traffic sa Syria, parang uh, medyo uh, holistic ang, ang yes. service yung naibibigay kasi uh, merong uh, psychosocial, may livelihood. So, napakaganda po niyan. Uh, so, ang gusto lang po sana natin, ito ay maging uh, practice sa lahat ng uh, kaso. So, yung proactive na uh, from from abroad, mag-coordinate from the shelter itself uh, bago pa man dumating. Para pagating po dito, hindi sila mangangapa. At lalo na po pagbaba nila sa kanilang komunidad. Kasi mabuti kung taga rito lang sa malapit. Pero kung taga rin po sa uh, mga malalayong lugar, paano po nila i-access itong mga ganitong uh, integrated assistance na essential mm -hmm. services po yan. Ayon nga po sa UN Women, yan po yung uh, mga assistance na kailangan talaga matanggap. Lalo na kung na uh, meet nila yung gender-based violence. no mm -hmm. So yun po, uh, uh, And then also, of course, yung legal assistance kasi uh, maganda na yung NBI po ay nagpuprosige sa kasong ito. Pero paano po kaya yung mga nasa komunidad na paano po kaya sila makaka-access? Uh, at hindi lang po yan sa uh, trafficking, kahit po dun sa nag, uh, may mga money claims lang. Yung isa pong binangkit sa Kutabato ay uh, wala na po yung NLRC doon. So hindi sila, nahihirapan sila mag-file ng money claims kasi wala na po Simula po nung mag-barm, uh, mm. wala na po doon yung NLRC. So nananawagan po sila sana po meron daw NLRC doon. At hindi na nila kailangan pumunta sa, I think, Marvel. Uh, mm -hmm. Na lupa pong malayo, ang, uh, talo na po ngayong uh, pandemic. So, uh, At maitatanong din natin yan, Miss Irene, yung tungkol sa NLRC sa BARM. Uh, mamaya konti kasi may resource person tayo galing sa MSSD BARM. So, but yeah, uh, okay. please proceed, Miss Irene, yung yeah. uh, gaps at paano pupunuin. Yeah, uh, the other one is that uh, we have been in touch with the uh, BARM Women Commission and mm -hmm. they said that they are willing, uh, they are very willing to assist our uh, uh, survivors of uh, trafficking 
At uh, kung merong mga kailangang i-pilot, for example, na projects, makakatulong sila doon. And of course, to coordinate okay. with the other uh, BARM agencies. So yun lang po muna siguro for now. Okay, marami salamat, uh, Ms. Irene. At bago ako dumako sa CATWAP to ask another important question para sa ating mga civil society advocates, quick follow-up question doon sa ating uh, MSSD BARM, si Ms. Michelle Agata. Ms. Michelle, andito pa ba kayo? Yes, yes. Uh, Sukra, na hapon na, nandito pa rin kayo. Thank you so much. Yeah, follow up po, uh, dun sa panimulang sinabi ni Ms. Irene. So, wala ng NLRC sa, sa BARM, pero ang, ang ganda to hear from your BARM women uh, commission na willing din uh, kayo mag-piloting kasama ng CMA and the uh, Uh, other migrant advocacy groups, no, na responses at prevention sa trafficking. Uh, Ma'am, Miss Michelle, ano po yung uh, structural reasons kaya particularly vulnerable sa trafficking, at least sa kasong uh, narinig natin sa ating tatlong uh, survivors, particularly vulnerable sa trafficking yung young Muslim women? Ano po yung structural reasons para doon? Yes, um, Madam Chair, um, This is based on our um, profiling. Uh, Doon po sa profiling namin na ano pa namin, it, it is based on the cultural reason somehow. Mm -hmm. um, maraming parents na medyo hindi sila masyadong um, devoted on sa education ng mga children nila. And also, um, because also of the armed con conflicts kasi, mm -hmm. um, because of this peace and security issue, marami na rin pong um, nag-abroad even minors and also they are not aware po of the legal age to migrate or mm -hmm. to apply. And yun na din po yung problema. Karamihan po nito na recruit po sa rural areas at karamihan po ng recruiter and almost of the recruiters are the relatives po. Kaya po maraming mm -hmm. um, hindi po wala so far parang wala pa pong napoprosecute na, na, na illegal recruiters kasi nga po nagpa-back out sila kasi kamag-anak din po nila. So yun mm -hmm. po yung isang malaking reason kung bakit maraming nare-recruit kasi wala pa pong nasasampulan so far. Agree. And uh, napakasakit marinig um, Ms. Michelle pero at tulad sa ibang mga dinidinig ng komiteng ito na too often family uh, located yung mga krimen laban sa mga bata, no? pati sa OSAEC, yung online sexual exploitation of children, uh, at iba pa. Um, but uh, I, I think ito ay posibleng simula ng dagdag pang mas epektibong responses natin. I hope that our committee can support you. Limbawa kapag uh, sinimula na ng uh, BARM Women Commission ang uh, partnership sa CMA para sa piloting no? ng Uh, both curative and preventive sa trafficking, lalo na laban sa ating mga batang babae uh, dyan sa BARM. Uh, salamat, uh, Ms. Michelle, and I have a feeling hindi po ito yung huling pakikipag-ugnayan ng komite sa inyo. Uh, shukran. Um, could I also ask now, Katwap, si uh, Attorney Sevilla, Attorney Sevilla, uh, Attorney Cristina, Uh, Sevilla. Uh, Attorney Christina, sabi po ng isang uh, NGO sa Cotabato, uh, parang dumami pa mas lalo ang pila sa DFA na mga kumukuha ng passport at madami doon ay mukhang minor. So yung unang tanong ko po sa inyo, do you think the pandemic is making the problem of trafficking uh, worse? Ms. Attorney Christina, andito pa po ba kayo? or ibang uh, resource person mula sa Katwap andito pa po ba kayo Kung wala na po uh, Miss Irene would you would you like to take uh, this question uh, pwede po nating maalala din na si Elias Lenlen uh, naging child bride din siya so may intersectionality dito no mga vulnerabilities at mga challenges na hirap, hinaharap ng ating mga bata Uh, so is the pandemic also making these intersectional problems of our young women and children worse? Uh, 
palagay ko po, based on the feedback from our partners in uh, Mindanao, for example, uh, mas marami talaga yung attempts ngayon to illegally recruit and perhaps uh, mm -hmm. traffic uh, our women uh, uh, abroad, no? Kasi nga, mm -hmm. uh, yung even before pandemic, kasi may problema na tayo. Kaya nga, ang dami-dami oh, nag-abroad. I, I, if mm -hmm. I remember right, ang Maguindanao has been uh, hindi ko lang alam kung up to now, yung top source of domestic workers yan. No? So, mm -hmm. and, and and that was before pandemic. Imagine now, where uh, pa pandemic na, ibig sabihin, aside dun sa unemployed sa Pilipinas, nadagdagan pa ito nung mga umuwi, galing abroad mm -hmm. dahil na-display na sa pandemic. So, talagang uh, in-expect namin uh, yung, uh, at tama yung feedback ng community na ang dami talagang nag-recruit bahay bahay o by, tri by motorcycle. Okay. Opo, salamat Miss Irene. And um, dun sa comment niyo, lumalabas talaga na, well, yung sinasabi uh, kanina din ng ibang mga resource persons, we need to go, even while we're undertaking immediate responses, yung systemic responses then going to the roots, whether ito yung social protection o ito yung generation of decent jobs dito sa atin bilang primary and best uh, option uh, ng ating mga kababayan. And then looking at the, the intersectionality of all these problems and needed um, solutions. Yes, and may I add, yes, uh, it, has I to be, it has to be down to the community, you know, yes, to the municipio yes. and to the barangay level. Kasi, uh, kumbaga, malayo tayo masyado sa national, pero very concrete yung problema sa komunidad. So, uh, efforts has to be done at the different stages from uh, prevention of pre-departure, pre uh, on-site, and uh, pagbabalik no? from the community level. Kasi, mm -hmm. ang, and we should consider na maraming mga LGUs tayo ang walang sapat na kakayahan, particular in terms of uh, budget. no. So, mm -hmm. uh, paan, although, of course, uh, hindi ko alam paano yung mandanas, uh, mandanas oh, yes. yan, paano yan papapel sa uh, ganyang problema. So, yun lang po. Isa pang mahabang at posibleng positibong uh, usapan yan, yung, yung uh, mandanas resources bilang isa sa pwedeng magamit sa pag-generate, pag-pondo, pag-sustain ng ating mga uh, interventions. Sige po, uh, mga kaibigan, no? mga kasama, bago ko po isara yung ating uh, pagdinig, meron po tayong... Uh, ilang huling salita no sa dinig natin ngayong araw uh, mula kay Ms. Alice. Ms. Alice, nakikinig po kami sa inyo. Hello po. Uh, gusto ko lang po magpasalamat sa tumulong po sa akin para mapu ako sa amo ko. Kay Consul General Wasim Nana at kay Philippine Embasador Bida, uh, Ma'am Bida Soraya Bersosa, Ma'am salamat po. At sa team ng Philippine Embassy sa Damascus, na natira ako doon ng isang linggo, talagang trabaho po sila. Kay Ma'am Beke, uh, Beke uh, kay, kay Ma'am J. Beke, Ma, marami pong salamat, Ma'am. At kay Sis Emily Silagan, si Salamat, nakilala namin, nakilala namin si JB kay Manandahi sa iyo. At especially uh, sa inyo, ma'am, mahal namin, Senadora Risa Teveros, maraming maraming salamat po. God bless you po sa inyo lahat. At God bless you din po, Miss Alice, at muli welcome back. At maraming salamat din po sa inyong testimonya na tutulong tumutulong hindi lamang sa inyo pero tutulong pa sa mas maraming kababaihan natin. Um, bago ko po uh, isara yung ating pagdinig mga kasama, uh, huling paalala lang po hiling kay Commissioner Morente sa Bureau of Immigration yung pong uh, pangalan ng immigration officer na nagstampo dun sa passport ni Elias Lenlen at sa kapo yes, yung salamat Commissioner at yung update din po uh, dun sa 349 names sa Viber screenshots kung ilan po ang aktual na na-encode sa system. Uh, would you have that data already for us, uh, Commissioner? Yes, Di yes Your Honor, I have, I have it already. Yes, sir. Uh, the immigration officer who cleared uh, alias Lenlen Apo. is uh, immigration officer to Margaret Hali-Hali. 
Okay. And uh, he is assigned in Clark Airport at present, but I am issuing mm -hmm. an order relieving him, uh, relieving her from mm -hmm. her present assignment and assign her to the admin unit of the Bureau for uh, investigation and uh, All right. uh, to prevent uh, any possible illegal actions again uh, if uh, he's doing, she's doing it. And as to the uh, 348 names, uh, ma'am, uh, this was uh, upon our request din noon sa Secretariat okay. to furnish us the copy of the uh, Viber okay. messages. Mm -hmm. yes. Na-lift po namin doon yung mga names. Okay. And uh, it has already been, uh, it's currently undergoing verification by TCE and it's almost mm -hmm. done. Uh, there were reported instances of no record of departure around 200, around 100 of the more than 300 mm -hmm. names. And uh, we will provide you the official report. And um, I also have uh, instructed also the conduct of the investigation to identify uh, who are the immigration officers who did not... Uh, record the departure of this uh uh nag mute po kayo commissioner we would we would okay. help uh, we would seek the assistance of the guy uh especially nag mute po kayo ulit sir ops nawala May problema yata sa signal si commissioner pero marami salamat yes uh, commissioner you're back Yes, ma'am. Uh, yun lang po. Uh, okay. We'll be seeking the assistance of the NBI uh, to assist us also in the investigation of this because, uh, of course, we will need the manifest. We will need the uh, sworn statements also of the, uh, those who were not recorded in our system. Maraming salamat, uh, Commissioner Morente, sa action ninyo and uh, expected continuing action kay kaugnay ni 2 Margaret Halihali. At saka abangan po ng komite yung validation nyo dun sa aming uh, nagawang um, na, na pag-alaman po namin. Tama po kayo, mga isang daan ang hindi na-encode kasi sa aming pag-aaral lamang, ang na-encode out of the 349 names ay 236 lamang. So I will await the final report of uh, Bureau of Immigration para ma-validate kung tama ba yung aming numero or may mas tama po kayong makukuha. Yes, Marami uh, salamat, uh, we'll do it as Commissioner. As possible, Your Thank you very much, sir. So, okay. so uh, mga kaibigan and uh, dear colleagues, no, sa hearing po na ito, Nakita natin na ang pastilya scam ng mga korap sa loob ng Bureau of Immigration ay isang bahagi lang ng napakalawak at napakalalim na human trafficking operation sa ating bansa. The breadth and depth of this revolting issue is one that we should take seriously. As if exploiting our women is not enough, Unscrupulous recruiters and human traffickers are also manipulating and abusing our children. Pinatotohana ng aming mga witness, sina Omaima, Len Len at Aleya, na dinoktor ang mga passport nila para matago na menor de edad sila, para makalabas sila ng bansa ng hindi kinikwestyon. This is a disgusting modus that needs to be stopped. Kailangan maimbestigahan ng Department of Foreign Affairs at nagtaya silang gagawin nila ang mga illegal na kalakal na namimigay ng peking passports kanilang imbestigahan. Dapat maimbestigahan ng mas mabuti ng DFA, Philippine Statistics Authority at mga LGUs ang kanilang mga opisyal kung may kasabwat nga ba sa paggawa ng mga peking passports o di kaya ay kung may lumalahok sa mga kalakal ng human trafficking criminals. Malalim ang talon. Mukhang may korupsyon at kahinahinalang galawan sa iba't ibang sulok ng ating mga institusyon. Sa DFA, sa paggawa ng passport, sa DILG, sa pagproseso ng mga birth certificate, at ang dati na nating nakumpirma sa BI, sa pagpapalusot ng ating mga kababayang palabas ng bansa. 
narinigrin natin ang mga hinaing ni na Ms. Marites at Elias Ales. Dapat matugunan din ng DFA ang mga reklamo nila, lalo na ng mga kababayan nating nasa ibang bansa pa. Let's make them feel they are not alone. Malaki ang tiwala nila sa atin sa gobyerno, kaya sana wag natin silang baliwalain. At muli, panawagan ko po, kung may mga matitinong opisyal pa ng gobyerno o kung sino mang individual, kahit personnel, na may alam sa modus na ito, mula sa pag-issue ng birth certificate hanggang sa makarating ang ating mga kababayan sa ibang bansa, harapin nyo na kami bago pa man kayo kailangang sentensyahan ng pagkakulong. Let's all help finally resolve this. Let's defend and protect the rights and dignity of our women and of our children. Nang may lubos na pagpapasalamat sa lahat ng ating resource persons, kina Sen. Aimi at Sen. Joel, the chair suspends this hearing. Marami pong salamat.